good evening everyone uh, we are all set to start our first virtual cpa meeting on bank audit analytics lfar ifc reporting organized by our hyderabad branch of src this is the first ever program uh, by after the new management committee took over so i i take the privilege of recognizing the presence of dignitaries c a deepak ladda chairman of hyderabad branch c a girdar lal toshmal garu treasurer c a chandrababu sikasa chairman c a chinasita ram reddy member of hyderabad branch c a sunil kumar mandava sirc of icci c a uh, chinna master manager uh, other speakers for the today session c a premna sir c a vijay sinha sir and uh, c a saran who is about to join uh, with this i uh, welcome chairman sir to give the program over you and welcome address thank you thank you secretary ravi kumar sir ready sir a warm welcome to all the speakers members managing committee members regional council member and all the members i first of all i would like to thank for all the members who have already the join more, more than 100 in number on dot and keeping the reposing confidence on hyderabad branch managing committee that uh, the program will start on time so by on 17 over we are already 100 plus thank you all friends the new committee has taken over on 30th of march last week and i thank all the hyderabad members for their high turn around in the elections dated 20th march after the successful conduct of the bank audit seminar in physical form in, in last month wherein vice president sir c aniket talati sir was the chief guest and sirc chairman c chinamastan sir was the guest of honor the program was very well received and very well delivered however due to positive of time we could not cover the data analytics part in that sem seminar which is very much required as we all know we have to deal with large amount of data given the limited paucity of time it is very much important to use excel and all other functions effectively so that we can discharge our audit and attest function very cautiously with this idea the managing committee the newly managing com man managing committee requested our most dependable speaker c a premnath sir c a vijay srinivas sir and managing committee member come speaker c a saran sir to kindly they share share their knowledge for the benefit of the members for which they have readily accepted in a very short notice thank you all the three speakers for accepting the invitation on the last minute and ready to deliver sir it is pleasure to inform that the registration has already crossed 400 and i think by the time you start the numbers will definitely go up thank you sir for all the patronage you have been extending to hyderabad member as always and looking forward for an effective and interactive sessions in next 3 hours thank you over to you secretary sir now we'll have a uh, address by our regional council member c s sunil kumar mandava mute lo undi sunil garu sunil garu me mute lo undante yeah dear chairman of hyderabad branch deepak ladda other committee members of hyderabad branch and dear respected uh, speakers of the day premnath garu srinivas garu and Uh, sir, one more saran from hyderabad branch committee members thank you for your good efforts sir i know how busy schedule you are going on from the last 15 days on bank audit seminars in various parts of the india so i thank once again you all for this opportunity data analytics and uh, reporting and lfr and uh, other parts in the bank audit is a most crucial part we know that a uh, use of excel as a most important part so uh, we required your guidance and also uh, areas where to cover most of the parts while doing the bank audit so give your good suggestions to the uh, auditors so that they can perform well in the upcoming branch audits thank you very much sir for your guidance and efforts thank you very much for the hyderabad branch committee for giving me this opportunity thank you very much 
Thank you. Thank you, Sunil Kumar Gar. Thank you, Sunil Kumar Garu, for your brief address. And now I invite uh, C H Nasita. I am ready to introduce our speaker, Vijay Sinhas Gar. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Vijay Sinhas. Vijay Sinhas is a fact. Post graduate. Uh, ACS, your voice is not. So that's why you should start, you start with Prima Cell. That's why you have to start with Prima Cell so that technology <laughs> will, riches will not be there. <laughs> it's okay. See, we are all known to the members. I think you can skip this. You can skip uh, CS. Please skip, uh, skip this. Let's spend more time on the uh, on, on the introduction. Uh, let us give the opportunity to the new committee, sir. It's just a matter of two minutes, <laughs> not more. It will not take more than two minutes. Okay, okay. okay. Deepak, are you able to hear me? Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. Clear. Yeah, we are able to hear you now. Uh, sorry. So, it's my privilege to introduce today's speaker, G.A. Kothapalli Vijay Srinivasan. Vijay Srinivasan is a a postgraduate in commerce and a fellow chartered accountant based out of Hyderabad, practicing for more than 20 years. He is also a certified information system <coughs> auditor. A certified fraud examiner by ACFT. He has completed various certifications of ICA such as anti-money laundering specialist, diploma in information system audit, forensic accounting and fraud detection, concurrent audit, index, indirect taxation. He also has done certificate course in cyber security by CIIGTO. His services are into the areas of information system audit, forensic audit, fraud investigation, fraud and risk management services, and data analytics. He is the present secretary of ACFE Hyderabad chapter. He has earlier served as a secretary of ISACA Hyderabad chapter. Hello, have you I think we lost the connection. Yes, Forensic yeah. audit, ASM audit, management audits. Sir, are you able to hear me? The signal strength is weak, uh, CS uh, Your voice is not actually. Sir, maybe. Secretary, sir, with your permission, shall I introduce Vijay Srinivasan, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Please go ahead. Yes. No, I think we'll move on to Premna, sir. I think uh, I could hear my introduction, so I'm happy with that. So please, we'll proceed with the Premna, sir, and we'll continue with the session, please. Okay. I request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ravi, sir, uh, request it. Yeah. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry for the interaction, but uh, we'll anyhow. We the speaker was very well known, so I I request our uh, treasurer. Sri Giridhar Lal Toshnamal Garu to introduce our another speaker, Prayamnath Garu. Sir, you are unmute. Uh, Toshnamal sir, unmute please. <coughs> Happy evening all dear friends and colleagues and members. Uh, Chairman Sri C. A. Deepak Ji, uh, Sri C. A. Ravi Garu, uh, Secretary, C. A. C. S. Reddy Garu, Sri Saran, Sri Saran Garu, Sri Chandrababu Garu, Sri Sunil Mandava sir, uh, Sri K. Srinima, sir, dear members, I got an opportunity to introduce Sri Premnath Ji. Sri Premnath Ji is a chartered accountant and also a Bachelor of Commerce from the Venkateshwara University, Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh. Uh, he has been twice nominated as cooperative member from the Institute of Chartered Accounts of India, SIRC. Presently, he is a partner at Sri Ramchandra Menko Chartered Accountants, Hyderabad. He has handled the internal and external audit of large manufacturing company, infrastructure, software, PSUs, and other very big companies, including banks under statutory, branch auditors, concurrent auditors, revenue auditors of Andhra Bank, now Union Bank, Canara Bank, Central Bank, Syndicate Bank, Dena Bank, 
एस बी एच नाउ एस बी आई इंडियन ओवरसीज बैंक एंड इंडियन बैंक ही हेज एन इनकम टैक्स रिप्रेजेंटेशन इंक्लूडिंग इंटरनेशनल ऑन इंक्लूडिंग इंटरनेशनल टैक्सेशन एंड ट्रांसफर प्राइसिंग he has an information system audit assignments designed and review standard operating procedures as a part of sap implementation systems audit he has conducted training program seminar conferences at icis at various level at various levels he is a speaker on hands of experience on audit under cps environment and use of excel in bank audit corporate taxi filing xml xplr and e files he is a faculty for icis concurrent audit certification course the topic is under audit under cbs software pinnacles flexibox banks conduct more than 90 to 100 branches of icici for its members he is a regular visiting faculty at icici since 1999 on auditing economic channel management communication skills information technology training for article students also he has presented papers on digital financial forensics officers of central vigilance commissioner at national police academy that is called npa hyderabad He is a regular visitor, visiting faculty on analysis on fi- financial statements from lenders' perspective at Andhra Bank, now Union Bank, Staff College in Gachi Bali, Hyderabad. He is a regular visiting faculty on use of technology in assessments at Income Tax Department, Staff College, Hyderabad; Commercial Tax Department, Staff College, Hyderabad; C and H Staff Training, Hyderabad. He has conducted training programs in bookkeeping, financial management, to accounts officers and accountants of various government corporations. With his few little words. I do a present year P Premanath Gar. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Giri sir. Uh, now, yeah. I request our I request our Sikasa Chairman Chandra Babu Garu to introduce our another co-chairman of Sikasa and today's speaker Sarant Kumar Upal Party. Please, Chandra Babu. Please introduce. Yes, sir. Good evening to each one of you present here. It gives me a great pleasure in introducing one of our panel speaker for today, C S Sarant Kumar. he is qualified the chartered accountancy in the year 2010 and later went on to complete his diploma in information system audit from icai he is also a certified holder in forensic accounting and fraud detection and con- uh, course on concurrent audit from icai as a part of his professional journey he has worked with microsoft and credit uh, credit uh, assurance bank for more than 4 years and presently he is the managing partner at T Satyanarayana and co chartered accountants also C A Sharan Kumar is a sitting member of the managing committee at Hyderabad branch of ACRC of ICI his specialization includes statutory audits internal audits forensic audits transaction audits under IBC automation of financial process data analytics including reconciliations etc he is an experience of more than 10 years in handling data analytical tools like ms excel idea power query etc he has been a regular faculty at fafd certification course conducted by icai and a guest speaker in various seminars conducted by the icai and other institutions like cmai and nacen on data analytics with ms excel audit under cbs environment and microsoft excel as an audit tool thanks for to speakers thank you sir i sincere thanks to all the panelists and all the participants now we'll have uh, session so we'll have the session started thank you thank you thank you very much uh, hyderabad branch at the uh, respected uh, senior members or branch committee members src members my dear colleagues um, i thank hyderabad branch for giving me this fantastic opportunity <clears throat> and i congratulate the uh, branch management committee team 21 uh, 22 and the earlier management committee branch Uh, for getting the uh, best branch award uh, for the efforts put by um, past chairman sri pankaj sir and then uh, past chairman sri banu sir and past chairman sri mathur rao sir and uh, their cohesive working uh, has made it possible for the branch to get a best branch uh, award i congratulate and uh, we hope that uh, the present uh, i hope and wish the present committee will take the branch performance to the new heights uh, 
uh, let's move on to the uh, today's uh, session uh, most important session today under uh, so much of development uh, going on on a daily basis and on one side our president sir is saying repeatedly audit is a audit is a serious business so how serious business it is um, let's go through uh, one by one with the uh, presentation um, this today's presentation will be uh, jointly conducted by myself and uh, management committee uh, members sri sharan kumar and uh, my co speaker uh, vijay srinivas we will be shifting among ourselves to see that uh, one speaker doesn't bore you continuously so let's move on to the uh, presentation yeah so data analytics bank data analytics reporting in lfr and uh, ifc reporting is today's uh, agenda more particularly of internal financial controls why internal financial controls reporting has become more important now is you can just see here it is 10th march 2022 rbi governor mr m k jain deputy rbi governor has a concern on the risk management and this is a document which you can search on the rbi site you can download it and this is what he says these are the these are the most important things that that are that is a concern of rbi today so more important is the risk management so where is why are we talking about risk management is it's a part of ifc as a part of ifc ifc internal financial controls we are talking this so what is the internal financial controls internal financial controls has three important ingredients number 1 there should be a process flow for every process for every part of the process risk has to be identified and that is what here the mk jain concern deputy governor's concern here that repeated exceptions to the risk policies conflict of interest on related parties then faulty risk faulty enterprise wide risk management operational risk for uh, on the uh, on account of people risk with fraudulent and all elevated it and technological technology risks and so on and so on these are all the major risks that the rbi is expressing openly and today since last year as a part of internal financial controls now we need to talk about this risk controls and the risk if controls are not effective its impact on risk of material misstatement on the income and expenditure assets and liabilities and presentation is very important today and that's the reason why i said today session is very important because we are giving an assurance we are giving an assurance to the stakeholders that internal financial controls of the bank are very good but however however if you look at the supreme court judgment if you look at the supreme court's judgment in amrapali it is clearly saying that the internal controls are very bad it is observed that there was no monitoring done by the officials even today it is and even basic checks like end use of funds were foregone no technical requirements followed as relating to relating to release of term loans banks acted as mute spectator to unapproved diversion of funds it is none other than it's not a newspaper report it is a supreme court in its judgment in amrapali has said this and on one side on the other side rbi is saying on the other side rbi is saying the risk the risk management is very poor in the banks 
and i say this is very important more than this banks themselves are saying very we are very poor in risk management and this is what i say here uh, let me just flash that what banks are saying you can just see here what bank is saying <coughs> as a part of as a part of complaint made by indian overseas bank as a part of fir first information report filed with chennai cbi and you can see what bank is saying here bank is saying here our internal controls are weak our internal internal control weakness that allowed misappropriation this is something like uh, 2000 or some odd crores of rupees of fraud that went on in the iob in, uh, indian overseas bank and bank is claiming bank itself is telling the cbi that our internal control system is very poor and you can see here not only that they say that the concurrent auditors this is a blame that they are making on the auditors concurrent auditors failed to reconcile the expenses as a part of audit and financial statements and so on and they say and most funny here is they say the management of the borrower meaning the borrowers took advantage of the fact that the maker and checker concept was not in place you can just understand a big bank like iob is saying we don't have the maker and checker concept in place and that is what is and that's what is exploited by the borrower and there are some negligence on the part of the branch and they are saying here end use is not properly followed and there are red flags not one bank not one bank you can just see the sbi on sbi on the uh, gold loan which i'll take up with uh, very detailed process i'll explain about this and uh, they say here uh, let me just flash you that uh, what sbi is saying about the gold loan processes that are there in the uh, bank so this is what this is what they say multiple loans were sanctioned most of the loan applications do not bear photographs not adhered to kyc signatures of borrower are differing now bank itself is saying we are very poor it's not one bank idbi it's not one bank you can just see here again sbi in a multi crore fraud they said there is a deficiency in the kyc documentation deficiency in obtaining documentation <coughs> not not the sbi you can just see the pnb punjab national bank like this you have like this you have yeah okay probably there is some uh, temporarily this site uh, maybe Uh, may not be uh, working but however you can go on to view the fir's you can go to view the fir's of uh, central uh, view cbi and you will find for 21 for 21 calendar year there are 3600 cases were filed out of that more than 1500 belongs to the banking fraud and these and these are <clears throat> and you will find every bank has filed a case with the cbi and in that and in that filing this is a case and you will find the bank is saying that we are very poor in internal control system that's what i am trying to highlight again and again when banks when rbi is saying our our risk appetite is we have a high risk uh, ways of doing things and supreme court is saying that there are uh, risk controls are very poor banks themselves is saying that we are very poor and what are we saying what are we saying in our audit report what are we saying in our audit report we are saying true and the internal financial controls are super 
when RBI is saying that the uh, banks have the issues, when banks themselves says we have issues and frauds are happening, when Supreme Court is saying that you have issues of controls, but auditor is saying, don't worry, it is all true and fair, go and enjoy. And now this is high time, this is high time that, uh, this is high time that we need to carry out data analytics to understand the uh, weaknesses. And to this extent, we are saying in uh, we are saying in the in our audit report that we are making data analytics. How are we making data analytics, and where are we saying that we are making data analytics in our audit report? Our audit report is SA seven hundred. In this SA seven hundred of SBI report, SBI or whatever bank it is, the audit report is one and same as per SA 700. And in this we are saying here, we are saying here we have professional skepticism throughout the audit. Now what is professional skepticism? I think members can, uh, they can, if you have access to the, if you have an access to uh, chart, I think you can, uh, uh, members can um, quickly respond with your professional skepticism uh, that is which is abnormal the professional skepticism means abnormality now here you have so much of data of if not so much it is nine lines of data in this nine lines of data uh, i expect the members some of the members can quickly respond on the chart what is the abnormality that you look on the screen? <clears throat> Can some members respond on the uh, chart? Uh, on the chart, instead of raising your hand, you can just you can just type in the uh, chart in a few seconds of time. The abnormality, the professional skepticism, which we need to have while looking on tons and tons of data. Some members may please respond quickly, um, looking at the uh, data, please, looking at the data. Because we, we encounter huge amount of data, um, huge amount of data. I think it's not the uh, raising the hands I need. Uh, you can put it on the chart, please. You can put it on the chart. Okay, I think, uh, right. So uh, the professional skepticism abnormality is, you can find on the uh, left-hand side customer ID and the name here, you find K Radha and Radha K. Something unusual, we cannot decide by looking at, but you, you, you professional skepticism should raise the moment a pattern of name is giving rise to some doubt, there yeah. can be cust multiple customer IDs. They have, they have responded through Q&A. Someone has mentioned yeah. other uh, staff. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Chart disabled. I'm sorry. Chart disabled. I'm sorry. Um, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, chart is disabled. Okay. Now, uh, good response that there are multiple customer IDs for the same person. How it is same person is when the moment we have seen the pattern of name, then we got it out. That is professional skepticism. Then we have we have searched for their physical documents and identified that K Radha, Radha Suresh Kamath, and Radha K are one and same. Are one and same after verification. This is the point what I'm trying to say here is on the professional skepticism. We are talking about professional skepticism. We are talking about professional skepticism. Professional skepticism throughout the audit and while you look at the data, how much data you look at is this much of data on a term loan. If you look at a term loan, it's not one month term loan, one month end term loan like 99 
सॉरी नाइनटीन मार्च नाइनटीन और मार्च ट्वेंटी वन और मार्च ट्वेंटी टू डेटा अलोन इज नॉट सफिशियंट फॉर अवर ऑर्डर यू नीड टू गेट एटलीस्ट थर्टीन मंथ फाइल्स ऑफ एनी फाइल यू टेक take it for 13 months and then combine all that and when you combine it becomes and uh, when you combine it it will it will become 14000 or 20000 line items when 20000 line items of data if you need to analyze we need to have a particular skill of using only five commands i keep saying this since 2000 onwards i have been saying this five commands one is sort to filter 3 if 4 we look up and 5 pivot table so these are the five steps i have been using since 2000 onwards to crack even 95% of the frauds can be can be cracked even 99% of the frauds can be cracked with this five only five things if sort sort filter if we look up and pivot table and what i am trying to say here is we are trying, we are saying in our audit report that i have professional skepticism professional skepticism on the large amount of data for using large amount for reviewing and carrying out analytical procedure as per sa 520 we need to have five five tools or five important uh, knowledge of excel i repeat again sort filter if we look up and pivot table that's what we are going to demonstrate today uh, myself vijay and uh, sharan okay so what are we saying here i am saying here identify and assess the risk identify and assess the risk of material misstatement and that's what i am saying here that's what we are trying to say here identify the risk of material misstatement as a part of ifc reporting meaning look at the process flow find out controls and see what is the impact on the material misstatement okay how it looks into process i said process what is that process let's look into this process here process yeah so this is the process there are there are 15 15 numbered processes there are 15 numbered processes in agriculture in one of the banks and at each process we need to find out the risk i come back again i i keep repeating the rbi's concern i keep repeating the rbi's concern on risk management now come back we are only talking about this risk at accepting risk at pre scrutiny risk here risk here risk means what can go wrong what can go wrong at 15 places and that is what is described in this risk and that's what is described in this risk identification risk identification in every process remember that's what i am i am just taking you to the i am again taking you to um the slide where i mentioned what are the what are the components of ifc one process flow yes i am i am i am on to the process flow here process flow next i am saying risk now at every point what can go wrong in application what can go wrong in pre scrutiny what can go wrong in gold appraisal like that you have 15 15 risks and those 15 risks are defined here those 15 risks are defined here and the first risk what it says at this first place sorry at this first place of risk what can go wrong it is saying incomplete documentation inadequate documentation incorrect documentation can happen that is what the risk is identified by the banker and if such risk happens how that risk looks like that risk will look like unavailability of the data unavailability of kyc unavailability of uh, memorandum in respect of gold ornaments dp note a dp note take delivery and so on whatever is this if this risk occurs and this risk will occur like unavailability of the prominent documents 
And the, this is what is the risk identification. Come back to my presentation again. I'm saying at each process, identify the risk. And that risk is described as a A path. Next, for this risk, how do you control? And the risk is controlled through defining various documents to be taken at each at each stage, what documents needs to be taken, what procedure need to be taken at each stage is defined here. Okay. Now, what I'm saying is whether this transaction, whether this control is a preventive control, is a detective control, is a manual control, is a system control, is a semi-automated or automated control has to be stated. And this is manual. You see here, it's saying here the control is manual, automated, or partially automated. Whether this risk is preventive, detective, or corrective. That's what I'm again saying here. What can go wrong at each process? What is the control to protect, to mitigate this risk? And that's what is written here. And this is what, this is how an IFC statement has, this is how an IFC document needs to be provided to the auditor. Now, now if such risk happens, what is the impact on the financial statements? And that's what I've written here. If in this, what can go wrong? If controls are ineffective, what risk can happen? What is the risk of material misstatement? Risk of material misstatement is the income may be overstated, expenditure is understated, assets and liabilities may be over or understated. In this particular case, in this particular case, what we have just now looked into, where a particular person is having a multiple customer IDs, IRAC norm says if one customer, if one person, if one loan account becomes bad, all the other accounts, all the other accounts linked to the customer ID should also become bad. That is what the IRAC norm says. Now come back. Because of deficiency in internal controls because of the deficiency in internal controls with respect to KYC, multiple customer IDs are created. If multiple customer IDs are created, then IRAC norms cannot be followed properly. If IRAC norms cannot be pro followed properly, loans are overstated. We are saying here loans may be overstated, income may be overstated, Provision under liabilities may be understated and loss may be understated and presentation of as per the RBI uh, Banking Regulation Act may go out of order and hence this risk will occur and that's what I'm saying here. I'm saying here there is a risk of material misstatement. Now come back. Now what is bank saying here? Now bank is saying if there is a risk due to non-availability of documents and improper documentation, bank is saying that there is no risk. However, look at this SBI case of gold loans, which I have just now demonstrated to you. In one particular gold case, gold loan case, 669 lakhs worth of gold loans, there was a fraudulent loan. And this has happened where <clears throat> In these cases, the applications were not bearing the photos, not had held to KYC, signatures of borrowers are differing in few cases, and so on and so on. This is none other than the documentation lapse. This is none other than the documentation lapse. And like this, and like this, I'm taking you to, I'm taking you to these places here again. You can find here deficiency in KYC. What is this? A multi crore fraud, wherein how this has happened, bank is saying that bank side played a role on following aspects deficiency in deficiency in obtaining documents, deficiency in sanction procedure, and so on and so on and so on. And what are we saying as an auditor in this? We are saying here, yes, and there is no deficiency at all. And not only that, you can, this is one bank. The way in which one bank has given, it is identifying the risk, it is talking about the controls, and it is talking about the risk that can happen. Now, you, ident 
now now the auditors need to now we the chartered accountants needs to understand that though they have identified the risk they are saying it will not impact like when for gold loans there are 15 processes which bank is saying it will not impact and in fact it has impacted and now we the chartered accountants should disagree with this kind of and have a note on it but you don't find anything to write here that's a different story but look at another bank the way in which they have given but look at the other bank the way in which they have designed the risk control matrix they have only talked about the control and they have not talked about the risk in one bank and more than that bank auditors response they are saying only yes no not applicable and this is one dangerous thing i'm sorry to say in the last audit in the last audit i came i understand that auditors have submitted some or few or more i don't uh, i don't relate i don't want to quantify it but some or many or few of the auditors have sent blindly whatever bank has just said for all these things they have put yes and the auditors have put their real round seal and then sent it and when bank itself is saying when banks are saying we have issues in when rbi is saying we have issues in risk management and when when rbi is when supreme court is saying that there are issues in uh, internal controls and when cbi reports and the bank itself is saying we have issues how can we give a true and fair an unqualified ifc report and look at this bank another bank another bank is talking about process sub process risk description and control activity and it is restricting the auditor and it is restricting the auditor to yes no not applicable only and now it is asking the branch this is where i am saying here this is what i am saying here internal financial control testing formats are not uniform among the bank among the banks and this is what today you and i need to highlight in the cfc audit and this is a golden opportunity if you are missing this and if you are missing this we are only foregoing the next coming bank audits because when rbi itself is saying that we have risk issues how can we give a true and fair how can we give an unqualified opinion on the ifc when banks are saying when rbi is saying the regulator is saying courts are saying banks themselves saying we have a very bad internal financial controls then it is for us to decide how to write these stories now what stories would you like to write and how that looks like let me just flash it in a second of time and then we'll go into the other aspects and uh, this is what we have observed in one of our audits that uh, when the banker has given yes 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 in all the cases we said we have disagreed and we have thrown that in the dustbin and then we started writing our own ifc responses here wherein ifc the uh, multiple ids were existing even 2021 and how to take out that is what the data analytics that i'll just cover in a, in a minute of time so and that too we have one npa account and then you can just look at we have we have said that you are not giving us time so we are unable to express due to limited time and server issues we have not verified it and this is how something we need to our reporting the uh, observations of the supreme court observations of banks to the cbi observations of the rbi observations of the chartered accountants should sink at one place and i just take one uh, one place where there is a cash difference uh, cash difference arising out of a wrong accounting voucher posted it now you can understand the cbs is working like a tally kind of controls where for anything you can debit and for anything you can credit if that is a case in which the cbs is working now we need to understand we need to go in depth in understanding the way in which the process flow process flow at the top level in erp or cbs and at the bottom level the uh, configuration of the accounting entries is what is the crux and beauty of ir uh, erp and cbs but that is not uniform and that is giving rise to wrong entries and discrepancies in cash that's what that's what i am trying to highlight in these situations how dare we give 
a report, an IFC report that the IFC is fantastically working. Okay, having said that, I said, how do we come out? How do we know? How do we make data analytics on this? I'll just demonstrate and then I'll hand it over to the uh, uh, Sharon for a few minutes and then I'll take over into it. So let me just demonstrate how we should be able to identify the uh, professional skepticism should work on the files. So let me take you to, yeah. So this is one file uh, we have taken. Okay, having said that data now, most of since 2000 onwards, I've been talking about the subject since 20 years, I'm talking about the same subject. Most of the time, every year I encounter from the members that we are not getting the data. We are, you are showing some files. When I go and ask that file, banker says, I don't know. That is a ringtone they play every year to the auditor and it is for us to get it. So what I'm trying to say here is, uh, let me flash what to do. Yeah, this is what you need to do. <clears throat> These eight points you need to follow. These eight steps you need to follow. What you need to do is don't, uh, don't ask a particular report name. Even today, even today we have encountered this because last year we, have we were provided with certain files and that file name I've, I've, I've called the branch manager of the current uh, branch branches and asked for a particular report name. He says, I don't know what that report is. So then we have taken the last year format header and sent to them, then they recognized it. I hope you understand. So what I'm trying to tell you is, don't ask for the report name. Ask for the MIS reports that they submit to the RBI, regional office, head office, to others. Please take their correspondence files, start reading. And this, this doesn't take more than half an hour of your time. So first look at the MIS reports. Then ask for, sir, how did you prepare this report? How do I get this report? Is this report CBS generated? Or will you type this report in an Excel? Or will you type this report in MS Word? You ask them. Then he will say, no, no, sir. We will not type anything and understand they should not type anything. Please understand there is an RBI circular in 2018, master circular, which they said that all banks need to submit a report directly generated by the CBS and they should not alter it in Excel. I, I, remind, uh, I, I underline my words. I, I, insist, I insist this. I repeat this. I stress this. There is a circular of RBI wherein they cannot type something in Excel and submit to the RBI. All those reports needs to be from the CBS generated. And that's what I'm saying here. The CBS, then they will say, no, sir. All those reports are generated from CBS. Then you ask for the, how to generate those reports. Take those CBS reports. Then what? From those CBS reports, now try to identify what content will help you to find out a loan performance, Loan performance indicators like stock statement, last date submitted, last last interest, principal paid, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. From all those contents, try to identify those columns. Those columns, I'll flash you those columns, like those columns which will, those columns which will talk about the quality of loan, those columns which talk about the quality of loan. So take out all those files. Understand the headers. Please understand the headers of each report like this. How those headers will be useful in loan performance indicators. On the above, make analysis for IRAC norms, frauds, non-compliances, etc., which we will be talking about now. And remember, mind it, any report you take, ask for 12 months. And that's what we have seen. 19, April 19, May 19, June 19, July 19, August and so on and so on and combine all that into combine all that into one file and I'm using sort this is what I said sort filter if we look up pivot table and all that has been used you can just see here this is a new if and this is what you can see a we look up here 
and you have pivot table and so on and so on into the other things again uh, again come back so what i am saying here is on the above take 12 months of reports and put it into then start using sort if we look up and so on and so on now if you have to do this all 12 months then you may have to use append the join copy paste all 12 files into one file that's what i have done here i have appended it how to append and all i think vijay srinivas will take you into those processes then out of that joined the file what i have said in the seventh column appended pasted file make sort filter etc on the above analysis and this is what this are these are the eight steps we need to follow and do not go behind the report names if the if the branch manager is well uh, cooperating with the report names you are lucky you are lucky if not if not this is a first step through which you need to enter into it okay having said that let me just go on into having said that i said let me uh, identify the uh, professional skepticism for this so when we have asked for the management certain files they said no we don't have a loan master file so let me just take you here so i i am i am i am distributing these materials and distributing this material wherein i am writing the process also okay now coming back here obtain customer master file they said i don't know what is mas customer master file don't worry if they say then tell them okay you give me the loan balancing file ccod cc files all current account uh, cc loan files wherein customer number and account number and name is there take ccod file where customer number and account number and name is there deposit file where customer number customer id account number and name is there put all those amend append all those merge all those paste all those into one rows like this and start using the command what is that we are trying to use now here is a fuzzy lookup command i'm trying to use. okay so let me just complete the fuzzy lookup and then come back to the auditing standards now fuzzy lookup so i'll do it in a fresh sheet now what it says here is i have just written what steps you need to do why i am saying what steps you need to do is why i am saying what steps you need to do is we are saying in our audit report that i am performing audit procedure in response to a risk whether due to fraud or error i am saying i am designing and performing audit procedure i am writing here i am writing here i am stating here the audit procedure so one of such procedure i am trying to demonstrate here so control l fuzzy lookup fuzzy lookup then table within this table i am saying two here so for every name i want a two names here okay and then i want that report to be generated here i'll just say okay <clears throat> yeah what is it saying here so for these names i'll just close this fuzzy lookup now yeah now you can observe here abhinandan golecha and golecha abhinandan is something like radha k and k radha in this uh, just now we have seen uh, this is where yeah now radha k and k radha kind of a thing is what we are able to see now here in this workings because with sort you may not able to get it and you will find here gulecha abhinandan here and so this is what a professional skepticism this is what we are trying to find out that there are risks involved in this why this risk is why this risk is happening is 
why how that risk and why this risk happens is let me just go into the internal controls now so let me take you to the internal control study here remember i just now talked about what can go wrong uh, let me just take you to the uh, what uh, sorry what can go wrong let me just take you to the process yeah at every process we are saying at every process what can go wrong now i am saying here also at every process what can go wrong while typing a name what can go wrong a wrong name can be so if a wrong name is punched here then it will create a multiple now what is the control for that the control for that is like in your mca if you are trying to create a din you have to first type the name and give the pan number in the pdf of mca then the name is the name as per the pan and name what you have typed if typed if it doesn't match it will throw away that it will not allow you to create the din number that's a system based preventive control now such kind of controls are not in existence in the psu banks <clears throat> what they do is they type the pan number they get the name some of the banks fantastic but when i give a pan number name uh, name in the pan is rohit kumar singh next time after 2 3 years he'll come with a aadhar card and tell them and in the aadhar card the name is Ro singh rohit kumar and he wants to take a loan and another account is created with singh rohit kumar why i'll take you to the process what is defined by the banks the bank themselves has defined here after a loan process is over they are asking whether the client has already a cif i'm very serious here i need your utmost attention the bank is saying whether cif is already existing whom do you ask this question are you asking the employee to verify whether there is a cif now if so what is the verification process like what i am saying here there is a process defined here to mitigate the risk to mitigate the risk there is a process defined here you can see the process is defined here like that did you define any process for verification of whether an id is already existing in the system or not like i have used fuzzy lookup whether the banker is using a fuzzy lookup kind of a procedure to identify whether there is a whether there is already a name existing in that whether such procedure is there in the bank if that procedure is name procedure is there in the bank why this why this is happening still in the banks why this is happening still in the banks even today even today why this is still happening in the banks <clears throat> which is resulting in multiple customer ids and which is resulting in material misstatement if you say that procedure is there now the question here it is saying whether cif is there if the branch manager says or if the accountant or the operator says or the client says no sir i don't have a cif then immediately they are created it why should this be a manual process which is resulting and this is where you and i need to identify you and i need to talk about this issue today in ifc and this is what today regulators are expecting from us and this is what will ensure that in future also we continue to get the bank audits i think you might have heard enough that the bank audits the bank branch audits has come to a dead end once it was 60000 branch audits has come down to 40 last year and now it has come down to 18000 in 2021 i don't have the statistics stuff 2022 but if you can wait till july then those data will be available on the RBI website. Then you will know. I am damn sure that the eighteen thousand might have come down to fifteen thousand, and so on. And it is high time that we need to identify these issues. Okay. Having said, now I have understood the process. I have understood the process as stated in my audit report. I am saying I am identifying and assessing the risk. What can go wrong at every process? Not only this process. 
at every process i am saying i am i am understanding the risk and i am obtaining the i am performing the audit procedure and i am getting the evidence and then i am expressing an opinion so that is what the process i am carrying out now so having said this we have understood we have understood that there are duplicate names and that duplicate names you have carried out with a procedure or a process which is described in sa 520 analytical procedures and those analytical procedures are none other than sort filter if we look up and pivot table and those are the processes that we are trying to carry out not only this let me just take you quickly into one of the process and then we'll hand it over to sharan yeah okay i'll just close see on this then coming back here now another way of looking at the data is another way of looking at the data is if you can look at the uh, the way in which the banking is going on i have said here <clears throat> i have said here there are banking frauds of 3 lakh crores out of gdp 233 lakh crores 200 lakh crores are the bank deposits 182 lakh crores are the credit of all the banks among that 13 to 14 lakh crores declared npas and declared frauds are 3 lakh crores now come back here now all the frauds have a common thread all the frauds have a common thread called related parties what are all these related parties related parties may be as per companies act definition income tax definition gst definition but you know the intelligent chartered accountant some of them might have guided these uh, fraudulent borrowers to ensure that their that that certain dealings doesn't come under the uh, definition of related parties and they they ensure that the threshold of 20% or 5% or 2% is breached so that they don't get caught under the related party definitions but however however we can still find out within the database with common with common criteria the common criteria is one phone number is linked to multiple accounts one email id one address one partner one director and these are the critical things which are linked to multiple and that's what we call it as a shell companies and we all know what is a shell company so in shell companies with a common directors or dummy or binami same addresses same phone number same email email ids so what i have taken is i have taken the phone number and the name and run a pivot table and once i have done this pivot table for every phone, for one phone number i have 185 accounts and this is not something unusual maybe unusual here and you find somewhere again one phone number having one phone number <clears throat> having this many accounts and like this you have so what so the professional skepticism what i am trying to say here is here one account <laughs> so the professional skepticism what i am trying to say here here so many accounts for one so the professional skepticism on the data analytics the huge data made available to us we have to look into the data analytics and when you look into these kind of things normally the suspicion should raise you have to if you get a doubt you need to resolve that doubt for that resolving the doubt procedure that's what we are saying again I, at the cost of boring you i keep taking you to this because today regulators are questioning what you are writing here so i'm saying after assessing the risk i have seen there is a risk of fraud here for risk of fraud i am designing a procedure and with the designing the procedure and obtaining an audit evidence i give an opinion though i got a doubt but this doubt has not resulted into a fraud i got a doubt i have proceed i have performed audit procedure obtained audit evidence and that evidence is saying that i need not give a true and fair opinion this is actually the three step process of audit which we are saying i am doing it and i am saying i am understanding the internal control procedure come back to the, the things here 
So having understood that these are all the accounts which are at risk, which has given rise to a risk by looking at the data analytics, I called for, and this is the process what I have followed here again. I called for the obtained the related party bank. What is related party? The related party is not the definition of Companies Act, Income Tax, and GST. The related parties here is the phone number or common phone number or common partner, common director, common employee, common address. Those bank accounts copy paste into one place, sort filter. Let me just take you to that. So this I've copy pasted one. So this is the account details of one account among that 185. And this is one account of 185 copy pasted here by linking, by tagging which account number and again 485 and so on. So after pasting one below another, now I'll sort it on date. So I'm writing here what procedures I am carrying out. I am writing. I, at the cost of boring you again, I take you here. Perform audit procedures. As a part of risk, I have done risk assessment. Now I am performing audit procedures stated here. Now, you see here on 3rd of April, 776 account number 25 lakhs has gone and 775 account number. 775 account number. Since I have sorted on date wise, on date on 3rd, what happened? On third, 27, 25 lakhs has come into this account at 11.30 a.m. And 11.31 a.m., this 15 lakhs cash is withdrawn. How I am able to say the time is you have a timestamp for every entry. So this is the 15 lakhs withdrawn out of that. And 11.31 and 11.32 cash is deposited back into this account. And all this happened in two minutes of time. And I hope you understand every cash deposit and payment, they count it on the machine. And to count 14.5 lakhs, I hope you understand how much time does it take, how much time it takes. This is none other than a book entries that have been made in the uh, book entries that are made in the uh, banking system, which you can find out. So if you have found this, what do you need to do? Now you need to report this. Where do you need to report this? You have to report this in LFAR on round tripping. On round tripping with respect to the frauds. <clears throat> and to this extent, to this extent, whether to this extent, whether bank has this is a risk. This is a risk bank is saying here. And to this risk, what is the control? I said here, what can go wrong? Something has already gone wrong. What is the control you have? There is no control. There is a control here. What is the control group? Now, if the if you can link all those accounts which are with common phone number, common email ID, and so on and so on, if you can link that as a group where a privilege is, where a facility is given here, if you can link and wherever group is there, and in that group loan funds are transferred to the non-loan funds or deposit fund deposit accounts then the system should stop that configuration is missing and that is what the experience of is audit <clears throat> configuration controls are weak and mandatory fields are not defined i'll, I'll share this ppt i don't want to read out and bore at this uh, short time short period of time i'm just demonstrating I am just demonstrating the control weaknesses, which banker is aware, everyone is aware. And this configuration controls are weak here and which is giving rise to that kind of fraud. Having said this, having said this, this is one such screen having so many fields. This is one such screen having so many fields. And to open one, one account, there are 18 screens and 18 screens have so much of data to be input. If so much of data has to be given, entered, now 
what can go wrong in all this if something can go wrong what should i do what is my responsibility where do i need to talk about these things in my report in management information you understand wherever fields are given these fields data goes in and this data is captured for report preparation garbage in garbage out there are no validation controls and this has this has resulted in multiple ids so garbage in garbage out so where if 18 screens of data you have so much of fields here if the data captured in this fields has errors it will have an impact on the management information system and what are we saying whether the branch has a proper system and procedure to ensure data integrity relating to all to the mis what are we saying here can i say yes here if i say yes here if i say yes i am giving an opinion if i say yes for the uh, let me take you to if i say s here now what is the risk i have i have identified and risk identified and assess the risk of management information system to say yes here what is the audit procedure design and audit procedure i have carried out to say yes here what is the audit evidence sufficient and appropriate i have obtained to say yes here yes is my opinion and this is what today regulators like cbi and rbi and dc of ici is asking for a detailed documentation of the chartered accountant when something goes wrong and that documentation is sa 230 so this is what is a little bit of data analytics what i have said uh, let me take you through before i hand it over to the uh, sharan now what we have stated here is it is all manual controls full branch activities or manual controls though they say it is fully automated fully automated let us not accept a person who is using tally for preparing a balance sheet i think you and i will agree that their process are not fully automated the tally is a balance sheet machine cbs has become a balance sheet machine not a control processes now i said how to ask for the data and how to carry out it because there are risks as stated by the rbi as stated by the supreme court as stated by the bankers themselves in their reports hence we need to carry out this ifc process now i hand it over to sharan and then i'll uh, come back again after uh, sharan and vijay talks thank you yeah. <clears throat> sir uh, thank you so much uh, premnath sir and uh, thanks for the hyderabad branch uh, uh, for the opportunity uh, it's always pleasure you know just hearing the lecture from the premnath sir since i am also the speaker uh, so i would like to just cover a couple of aspects i am sure very elaborated lecture the premnath sir has given on the ifc i would like to more focus towards the data analytics with respect to the points which we need to specifically mention in the lfr without taking much of the time let me just share my screen uh just before going into very in depth uh, i just would like to keep this screen uh, visible for everyone uh, this particular slide uh, i'm i'm cbs is you know a very very big uh, application where uh, there are interconnected so many applications are obviously there and also in one of the point uh, where we are going to uh, comment uh, uh, in the lfr that uh, whether uh, it is 100% automated and also are there any other applications connected so just to give you uh, a very brief of uh, cbs very brief uh, just one minute talk on this you will be finding basically the three servers application server database server the reporting server application server is something uh, once you step into the branch uh, if you want to deposit some 10000 rupees so whenever you hand over 10000 rupees to the staff they'll open one screen before them and they'll start keying the data and uh, the screen entirely is nothing but the application server otherwise if you log on into your net banking if you want to transfer some funds the entire uh, interactive portal you are having is an application server whenever the branch staff or user enters the data where that goes and sits somewhere it has to go and sit right that is what the database server is so the entire transactions going back at the back end in the database and sitting over there that is basically uh, uh, into the structured format into different columns and different rows 
but as a chartered accountant or an auditor of a bank branch you are not going to get the access to the database server in fact the hue and cry is happening everywhere whether in future the branch audits will be there or not uh, the reason is exactly this maybe if a person uh, who is good with the data analytics and can get the access to the database server maybe out of the entire audit 50% with the logics if i can make a, a data modeling if i get the access to the database server i can sit at a central office of the bank and i can uh, do all the logical approach uh, into the direct server so but anyway this is what the one we are not going to get the access as of now but for what you are going to get the access the reporting server the reporting server is different from bank to bank in some of the banks what they are cleverly doing like union bank they are not going to though they are going to give the access to the financial they are keeping all the reports and keeping into the internet for the auditors one of the report which we need to get is a1 to a4 report and if you go to the sbi they are having a reporting server where you can download the loan balance file and so on this reporting server is not only for the auditor they keep uh, design at the back end continuous work they keep uh, put a lot of reports uh, for the regulators like rbi for the management for the auditors like us okay this uh, this is what exactly i would like to just highlight a point in fact when prema sir was talking about uh, he also highlighted this point let me just show you one uh, circular given by the rbi with respect to the automation if you observe here the title is automation of iraq uh, process in the banks uh, this has been released on september 14th uh, 2020 and if you read this carefully in terms of which banks are advised inter alia to have appropriate it system in place of identification of npa and generation of related data or returns for both regulatory reporting as well as banks own mis it is however observed that the processes for npa identification income recognition provisioning and generation of related returns in many banks are not at fully automated this is i am not saying this this is given by the rbi banks are still found to be resorting to manual identification of npa and also overriding the system generated asset classification by manual intervention in a routine manner rbi identified with their internal audits and they identified that many of the banks they are still going into a way of manual intervention the system generated npa process right so what they are saying in order to ensure the completeness and integrity of the automated asset classification provisioning calculation and income recognition process banks are advised to put in place or upgrade their systems to conform to the following guidelines by 30th june 2021 if you look into this date this is the date falling into the financial year for which you are going to do the audit 21 22 that means as on 31st march 2022 for which you are doing the audit of the branch if anything not only an asset classification related or provisioning related even if you find any report which they are manually keying in maybe in excel format or whatever the format they are sending across to the mis or maybe rbi or auditor that means you need to comment upon because their rbi is expecting by june 30th 2021 the entire process has to be automated so with this you, you can look into the couple of aspects maybe let me just go into the you know, first analysis part basically uh, once you step into the branch the first thing we need to ask for is all the advances uh, of whatever the files we are having basically you will be having two files one is the loan balance file the other one is the ccod file as prem sir mentioned it is correct the names may not be seen loan balance and ccod may be the central bank of india or csbi people can understand but maybe if you go to the other bank where they are not using the same banks 24 you need to ask for the file advances okay wherever the advances written is there you need to ask for that file some of the many of the cases they don't keep all the advances into one file except in case of ubi in the ubi i'm sure everyone might have got the uh, branches allocation and if you log in into the uh, link what they have given considering you know keying your usa number you can download the uh, annual closing uh, document where they clearly mentioned they are going to provide you the intranet access where they are going to keep all the returns out of all the returns of union bank 
A1 to A4 return is one of the very important return, having almost like 80 plus different columns and every advance covered there. In case of other banks, you just need to identify how many files together you need to combine to make the advances file. My suggestion, you first compile all those files from the reporting server. If you get the access it, you can directly go and get the data. If not, you can ask the branch manager. What is the validation control whether the branch manager has given you the correct data? It's very simple. You put all the advances file one below other, you add the total outstanding that must need to match with your balance sheet. Many a times we just accept the data what the branch manager is giving it to us. But I, I, you please don't just look into the data what they have given you should have your own validation one of the very important activity generally you will be finding you know the text files so you can simply open the text file control plus c is the shortcut control plus c you can go to your excel file control plus v it is a very simple process. Maybe if you can practice five minutes before going into the bank audit, you can do it. But I can't do the analysis on this data. The reason behind, I can't apply the pivot table on this. I cannot write the formulas on this because though the data looks like uh, directly here, but in one single cell, the entire data is appearing. I need to apply a tool called text to column where you can find in the data tab text to column. I'm going a little slow from here because you need to uh, maybe note down if possible. Okay, so text to column. Is this a delimited file or text fixed width? If you look into this file, this is a fixed width file. That means every column having a specific characters, it will not go beyond those many characters. That is a fixed width. Let me go to text to column. Let's go to the fixed width, go to the next. This is one of the screen little peculiar where you can't resize the screen size. So the preview you can find only in these six, seven rows. So I want to break this column here. Second column, I have to break here, come towards right side. You have to be a little patient enough here, come towards the right side. Just break the column here, come towards right side. This is the limit. This is the interest rate. This is the theoretical balance. And this is what the outstanding balance and come towards little right side you will be having the irregularity amount. You are also having the sanction date. You are having the EMIs due, EMIs paid, EMIs overdue, come towards little right side. You are having new IRAC codes, old IRAC codes, arrear conditions, come towards right side. You are having currency, account maintaining branch code, and also you are having the installment amount, irregularity date let me come towards little right side unrealized interest accrued interest stress is there an sma code relating to this and what is it a risk asset and uh, what is the date of the risk asset then written of flag and so on i'm just making it a little quick here because these all are the columns you can easily understand self-explanatory once you are done with this just click finish you need not to do anything so I just copied the data, I pasted into my Excel. Since I cannot do the direct analysis in the data, I just need to do the text to column, right? So I just applied the text to column. Now you need to do the data cleaning activity. Data cleansing is basically removing the unnecessary data by keeping only the related data, for which I'm using one technique. I will go to the top row, select the entire row, come down till the heading. Okay, you can delete these rows. You can simply use a shortcut called control minus, right? So that headings you can find on the top. I want to select the entire data. What is the way? Keep the cursor at the A1, control shift end. Control shift is basically to select. End is the one to select till the last used cell. I can simply go to the data tab. I can click the filter. Okay, because filter is one of the best tool which can clean up your data. Now, what is the logic I need to use here? The logic is very simple. In the account number column, in the account number column, I don't want anything other than a number. It is very easy for me to select everything other than a number. You just go to the end, 
just go to the end select every item other than a number if you go to the end you will find all the text items check it out here you will find all the account numbers from top to bottom uh, at the bottom all the text items are there i have selected let me click okay once you click okay unrelated data irrelevant data you can find here from here you can use a shortcut just now i have covered control shift n i don't want this data so what is the shortcut you can use control minus you just need to click okay that's all right now i need to clear the filter wow this is what the data on which i need to analyze what i just now used the shortcut you know just double click this or else you can go to the home tab go to the format i want to auto fit the column width now you can just select the first one keep it as a bold just for the better visualization to files you must be patient enough to complete but if it is different type of files if it is the same type of file maybe if you are a little familiar with macro you can use the macro while you can record the macro while doing the first text column it remember at the back end next time you can does the same if you are a little pro excel user you can use the power query for this you can write a small macro program for this you can even get uh, your uh, uh, all tricks or any of the data analysis tool right i have made a small tool in fact for the last 3 years i am circulating for the state bank of india as well as andhra bank users after andhra bank merged with the union bank since union bank directly giving the data in the excel i am only providing for the uh, sbi in fact maybe next two days i am going to give the release for the 2022 since it is a old data what i'll be doing let me take the loan balance file in fact what i'll be doing i will just take the ccdp file just for little time saving though i have explained for one file remaining files are exactly same i'll just go here in this tool it's very simple you can just go here i can get this data it does the entire activity and it does the text to column for you let me go to the loan balance file let me select this now double click this it does the entire activity and let me go to the ccod let me just double click this it does the entire activity wonderful okay so manual also i have covered you can easily understand now let us look into the ifr uh, lf ar and uh, check what are the things where the threshold is available let me just come down because many a times people doesn't read this and directly go to the audit and they are not sure what is the scope of the audit but here though i am taking little time in this aspect but i would like to just give you what is the scope of the branch auditors just have a look this is what the document given by the rbi guiding principles on objective strategy scope coverage of lfir for branch auditors this is very important para in fact this gives you entirely what you need to do at the branch the overall objective of the branch audit should be to have the transaction testing this word they have used many a times in the entire LF, uh, lfar document transaction testing and provide the inputs to the central statutory auditors and adequacy of implementation of various policy and regulatory requirements that is including efficacy of the system and assurance function and also the threshold fixed for different purposes for comments in the lfar will decide that above the threshold transaction detailing needs to be seen that means in case of large advances in case of the thresholds wherever they specifically mentioned you need to do the transaction testing that means you need to just look into the from the starting point of the advance till the end every aspect pre sanction post to sanction during the account how the monitoring is there if below the threshold we just need to look into the system and the process should be checked and commented upon this is a very clear scope the rbi has given for us why this is important because if you look here if you look into the point number 5 which talk about the entire advances at the top itself they have given what is the role of the branch auditor and especially when we are trying to do the advances let's say i i stepped into the branch i have seen the advances there are 1800 accounts will i get a time to look into 1800 accounts end to end obviously no the even if i look into the accounts which sanctioned in the 
last year. Still, I'll not get the time because I will be allocated. But let's say if I decided to do the audit of 100 accounts, I need not to do the 100 accounts start till the end. Why? Because let me start reading this so that you can understand how your audit planning and sampling methodology is. The answers to the following questions may be based on auditor's examination of all the large advances. For this purpose, large advances are those in respect of which the outstanding amount is in excess of 10% of outstanding, aggregate balance of fund-based and non-fund-based of the branch, or 10 crore, whichever is less. That means first you need to total what is the total advances size into 10% or 10 crore, you take the minimum. Then you keep all those accounts aside. Let me first do this activity in Microsoft Excel. Anyway, I have done this activity, right? I got the CCDP file for the time being. Let me do this. Now, let me take uh, what is the total advance. Just simply use a sum function. Go to the CCOD file. I'm sorry. Just go to the CCOD file. And finding a column called that TC. This is the CCOD total, right? I want to know the term loan and other loans total. Okay. So equal to sum, go to the loan balance, go to the loan balance. I'm, this is the outstanding balance I'm having, enter. So this is what my total advance is. So 356 crore is my total advance. I want to take the 10% of above equal to 10% multiplication into 10%, right? So what is the limit for the large advances? 10 crore. Simple. I want to use for the LFR, large advance limit is simple equal to minimum of these two. 10 crore is my large advance limit. Now what I need to do, I just need to go to CCOD balance file, give the filter, go to the uh, Account balance, paste, and go to the loan balance file and cross check. Is there any outstanding greater than 10 crore? Go to the end, maximum is 6 crore. So, this is the only large advance we call. This is you can keep it as an actual one where even the branch need to give their annexures with respect to this. This is the annexure one. See, everything you need to make it as a documentation here itself because even after four years or five years, if any regulator calls, point of time you should not go back and this is one let us start looking into this data even you can do the uh, and select the samples using the stratification you can do a lot of stratification methodology out of this just click just click Okay. I'm sure pivot table is one of the beautiful tool. If, if you know the pivot table, you can do majority of the audit. Surrender. Uh, your voice is breaking. Uh, they uh, kind of, uh, they request to switch out the video. Probably that will oh. bandwidth. Let me give the comma format. Okay, okay, no problem. Uh, I'm sorry, is it okay now? Mm. Sorry, uh, is it okay now? Yeah, now it, is fine. now it is fine. Now it is fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, I so it's still continuing voice breaking. There's a huge voice breaking. Just give me one minute, sir. Let 
sir let me connect to the other uh, yeah yeah uh, better work with better yes one and probably once you are connected try to uh, uh, repeat the last uh, five minutes yeah. no problem no problem i'll do that yeah uh, can you please confirm sir is my voice okay now uh yeah, it's fine but i believe still some uh, is it uh, i in fact connected with the other network uh, i i no no i think it, it, sounds, be... it sounds good it sounds good now i think it's fine now okay okay thank and you so you much thank you so much i'm sorry for that no, no, yeah, no. i'll do that i'll do that see i hope everyone are clear with this okay so what i'm going to do i want to do the little stratification for my sampling i will just select the data i will go to the insert i will use the pivot table i will just click okay and i will just come down i will take the outstanding balance in the values it is 123 crore right so i want to have and understand the portfolio and what type of samples i should take then i will take outstanding again in the rows once you take any value in the rows any field into the rows every unique value will come one below other now i'll be doing right clicking i'll just click group group is one of the very beautiful option in the pivot table the advantage of grouping is it's going to divide the entire data into different ranges it automatically identified suddenly your starting number is 0 your ending number is 6 crore 95 lakh plus and do you want me to make 1 crore as a group yes let me click okay if you observe carefully total 123 crore is my loan balance and uh, this is what the different grouping below 1 crore advances 84 84 crore worth is there 6 crore to 7 crore 6.95 and so on what i'll be doing i will also take the same outstanding year another outstanding another outstanding okay you may be thinking i am mad taking one after other four but don't worry you will be finding lot of meaning here i will just right click here i will summarize values by sum i want to also know what is the percentage of this let me go to the percentage of grand total sum percentage i want to make the count this one number of accounts i want to make the count percentage right click show values as percentage of the grand total this is count percentage the meaning is if i can do the audit of how many accounts 16 accounts that means i am almost covering 31% of my total portfolio of the loan advances maybe while doing the audit this could be my priority 2 uh, and these all could be my priority 1 okay as i said while working with your data your working papers sh should get ready so this is my priority 1 right so there are 16 accounts i need to do the audit now what I, what i can do here i can here itself allocate to the staff let's say let me take this by uh, let me let vijay handle this and this all handle let say staff call sharan this is the way i can even prepare my working papers along with the samples but sharan if i want to go on get this 10 what is the mean how i can do that it's very simple it's a pivot table you just do the right click sorry double click so that the entire data will come out so let me give this as a staff name vijay as a samples right you can keep besides the annexure one and i want to get for the other guys Uh, sharan has to do the audit of uh, six why how you will get directly six instead of double clicking four times it's very simple i can right click here i can group what i'll be doing i can end up here with instead of six crore let me start with one crore i want to start with one crore right this is i hope correct double zero double zero double zero and triple zero yeah this is correct and i want to have the total of 1 uh, uh, crore as a step value and uh, if i click okay so what is the meaning of it from 0 sorry from 0 till 1 crore it will take the grouping and above 1 crore it group everything together right in this case about 2 crore you can just keep 2 if i can just click 1 this is the way you can get it now what i can do from 0 to 1 crore this is what the stratification 1 to 2 crore this is what the stratification 
greater than two crore everything this is the stratification simply i can double click this and this is i can allocate to staff so let's say sir right and in fact one of the case study what prema sir explained about the account number versus the customer so let me take that case study i don't know how you guys handle it you can uh, uh, guide me uh, i can let you know first how i handle that case study for example if you look into this customer id let's say one customer id is having five accounts i'm sure you all know the irac provision even if one account under that customer id becomes npa all accounts has to become npa automatically in fact in the last audit where we have done for the union bank for one of the branch we did not find that type of situation that means we got the arduous uh, situation let me go and do the pivot table go to the insert click pivot table you will be finding this now what is the analysis we are doing we just want to see the analysis in such a way whether is there any arduous case of cust for one customer id having more number of accounts if one becomes npa all should become npa but if you look into the raw data you have it called standard asset or npa this you can easily identify in the ubi but in case of sbi how you can get the npa you need to ask for another file called npa then you directly use a vlookup function so that out of all the advances you can have what are the npa accounts what are the substandard accounts and what are the standard accounts so that is what the tag here i have taken sa and npa let me take this customer id into the rows what happened now one you can remove this is what the office accounts not required in this case all the customer ids i got one below other now what is the analysis i am doing i want to get all the account numbers so let's take accounts in the values okay we got the count you can simply right click sort by largest to smallest what is the meaning of this when i do the sorting for this particular customer there are nine accounts are there nine advances are there for this particular customer there are eight advances are there but how do i know out of these nine how many are in npa or how many are in st st standard assets it's very simple you can just take this tag and keep it into the columns so that it automatically bifurcate all nine accounts are into standard i'm sorry since i click double i did double click so i got the extra in this case all nine are into standard there is no problem in this case all eight are into standard there is no problem but when the problem situation when some of the accounts are in npa also for the same customer id some of the accounts are in the sa okay i don't want the grand total as of now so what i'll be doing i'll go to design let me remove the grand totals off right also i want to have the total amount outstanding so that you can see along with this the amounts also let me go down you will find a column called a net outstanding let me keep here so that this is nothing but the number of accounts this is nothing but the outstanding value for npa this is number of accounts outstanding wonderful now i need i want to write a small formula through which i can easily identify for one customer are there any accounts npa as well as sa let me write a small formula equal to there is a and function and function is basically a simple ms excel function in fact in our school days we learned about the uh, logical uh, tables if all results are true final result is true even one logical result is false the final result is false that is what the and function talk about let me ask a simple question is it greater than 0 also let me ask the question is it greater than zero if both are having some accounts right let me simply copy and paste right now i want to use a function called if function if function is a logical function it is simply like a decision tree if this logical test is true i want to display check if this logical test is false i want to display okay as you all know text has to be covered in the double quotation in the formula if i just copy and paste wherever okay is there that means there is no problem wherever check is there there may be a problem so what i'll be doing i'm just keeping the heading check let me give the filter for this let me filter i'm sorry 
let me select everything and give the filter. I want to filter only the check. These all are the cases where there is a problem. What is the problem? You know, they for this customer, there are five accounts, four are classified under MPA, one account classified as a standard. Okay. So this is what the problem. In fact, until unless we do the data analysis like this, for you, I'm telling it is impossible by directly looking into the data and identifying these type of cases. In fact, as I said, this is a real case study. In the last year in the Union Bank, we found for one of the branch. I I have sent all these 25 accounts to the branch manager and I asked him what is the clarification for this. Then he simply said, Sharon, though there are accounts classified under SA, if you look into the outstanding, the outstanding is zero. So you can ignore looking into the materiality. I'm just asking the question back to all of you. Am I need to ignore this particular, whatever the adverse thing which I found because the total is zero or I need to comment upon? If you ask me, we need to comment upon because here my bothering is not about outstanding zero, but about the classification which the system is doing. When the branch is claiming the entire classification is happening automated by the system, this should not be the case. And also this is another serious thing. Since this is a standard asset, who knows, maybe a branch manager can allot a temporary OD and the next two days he can use it and he can deposit the money back. So those type of situations can happen. So if you can correlate to your LFR, if you come down properly, we need to comment upon even the asset classification, provisioning and advances. Until unless you do that type of analysis, I doubt you can comment upon this type of thing. Has the branch identified and classified advances into standard, substandard, doubtful loss assets through the computer system without manual intervention? I cannot comment seriously. Is the identification uh, classification in line with the norms provided prescribed by the Reserve Bank of India? In this particular case, it is completely the adverse comment for this. Okay, so until unless you do this type of stratification, it is impossible to find the cases to comment in the LFR. This is one type of stratification. Let us go with respect to the other type of stratification on the same data using the loan balance. Let us just go to the insert. Let's take the pivot table. Pivot table, as I said, is one of the great tools. I want to have the classification based on account type. Let's go to the account type. Then let us do the same stratification for the outstanding. Just go to the outstanding and keep another outstanding. And let, let this be two, fine. Now I can simply have the sum for this. I can have maybe the uh, sum percentage. Let me right click this, sum percentage. And you can just take this. This all can beautifully, uh, we can use it later after a couple of years in the situation when we get the notices from the regulator. You will appreciate all these items uses at that point of time. Count and this is count percentage. Now let us make the samples out of it. It's very simple. I can let me just select this. Always try to keep the comma format so that our eyes can capture easily whether those all are crores or not. I can simply right click here. I can just do the sort maybe from largest to the smallest. Now there are 125 samples. Let me take the sample here. I can take maybe out of 125, uh, maybe I can take some five samples out of this, some five samples out of this. You can just, or else let me just right click and do the sort of this very quickly. I'm sorry. Yeah, five, five, one. Now let, let us take some three samples out of this. Three, three, three. Maybe let us take all these cases, two samples. Maybe in all these cases, let us take one sample, right? That means I'm covering even one account from every product, total 55 samples I'm just taking. If you want even to allocate this to your staff, let's say you went with four staff, you can even use a simple rand between function, one comma four, then I want to use a choose function before this so that randomly I can allocate to the staff. Let's say Vijay sir is one staff name, Sharon is other staff, let's say Srinivas is another staff, and let's say my friend Ravi is another staff name. Let's enter 
it is the excel job to allocate randomly just copy paste special values so that you can just ask them to filter take this data out and you can allocate and keep it as another nxr or a stratification this is what the stratification number two for the loans you can do the same for ccod and so on right and also if you as as prema sir mentioned clearly every column talks about some of the item in our auditor if you observe carefully account number and customer id we have already done some analysis account type we understood the portfolio of the entire branch customer name already Pre prema sir explained very in detail how they can manipulate with the names maybe one name can be sharan kumar you the other name can be sharan you sharan kumar and so on let us look into this if you look here we are finding two columns called theo balance and outstanding balance as you all know, Theo balance is basically uh, ideal balance. That means if the customer is paying on time, what must be the ideal balance in the books of the branch, right? Outstanding is an actual balance. We can easily correlate and compare. If the Theo balance is uh, more than the outstanding balance, what is the meaning of it? That means the customer is paying much advance much in advance than required. That means, let's say he needs to pay 10,000, he's paying 20,000. Maybe for next three installments, he's paying well in advance. For example, if the Theo balance is equal to the outstanding balance, what is the meaning of it? Very simple. On example, the Theo balance is lesser than the outstanding. That is what the case of irregularity. Already there is a column called irregularity, but my suggestion, wherever it is possible to have a validation control, I request you to make your own formula, then cross check with the given report. I can use a simple if function. If the outstanding is greater than Theo balance, I want to get outstanding minus the Theo balance. If not, otherwise case, copy and paste. Friends, in all my reports, if you observe, I'm going to keep a different color for all the columns which are inserted so that even after five years, I will get to know what is the raw data and what are the columns which are inserted. Now, let me have a simple check. This minus this must be zero. That means the system calculated return, what it is showing, what I calculated, both are exactly same. But how can this irregularity or theo balance and outstanding we can use it's very simple i can calculate the overdue emis out of this how we can calculate it's very simple i can simply put irregularity divided with the emi value what we are having here this is what the installment value now what i can simply do just copy and paste what is the meaning of it let's say irregularity is thirty thousand, whereas the emi is let's say 5,000. That means how many EMIs are overdue? Six EMIs. It is indirectly a way of analysis which I am doing. Instead of believing the NPA data, what they are giving, I am just cross-checking myself whether this is properly treated as an NPA. This is what the analytics we need to do. Now I'll simply put this into a different color. What I'll be doing, I can simply make a small stratification out of this. Go to insert, click pivot table, Click OK. What I can do? I can take the, where is the, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is the old data. I'm sorry. Let's select this. Let's go to the pivot table. I don't want to use the old data. Let me refresh. Finish. Great. Now let me go down. You are having overdue EMIs. Take here. You are also having uh, maybe uh, uh, account numbers or size. You can take anything. That's fine. Maybe let me take the outstanding balance here. Let me keep the comma format zero decimal. As you all know, zero means perfectly on time, right? Now, right click one of the beautiful option. From zero, I got till 24. One is basically the range I want. If I click OK, very simple. I'm sure you all are aware of SMA 0, 1, 2 reports. Okay, SMA 0, 1, 2 is talking about the irregularity period, right? 0 to 1, this must be into the SMA 0 report. I'm 100% confident if you go and download the SMA reports, I'm sure all these transactions, let me also keep a number of accounts so that you can understand exactly what it is. So let's take the number of accounts so that you can see the count. So I just want to know the count. Wonderful. This is what the outstanding. 
just to reduce my column width, this is what the count. Okay, this must be into the SMA report. That means one to two months. That means one to two installments. This must be into the SMA one report. And I'm sure this must be into the SMA two report. If it is not, you should ask the question. That is what my point. I'm sure these all must be into your NPA report. This is a way through which you can do your own analysis with respect to the SMA related stratification. What is the other way? And also my another suggestion, you try to get the codes wherever it is possible. Many a times people simply delete these things, area conditions, since they doesn't know, they'll simply delete this column because they are not exactly sure what is the meaning of area condition. But friends, I made, as I said, I made a small tool, right? So in the tool, I just kept the uh, especially with respect to the uh, SPI, all these arrear conditions and everything, right? This is what the meaning of arrear condition. 501 means EMI overdue 7 to 29 days. 504 means 1 EMI 30 days to on so on. So what you can simply do, you can have a VLOOKUP function when you have this type of code. That's the reason I just downloaded for the current year. Everyone, please have a look. I Let me download the Union Bank. It is always a good habit to ask them uh, what is the meaning of the codes. Whoever into the UBA panel, I'm sure by this time you must have downloaded the annual closing report. In that, they have given all the codes. Generally, you will be finding the codes in your regular reports. Since you doesn't have the respect to code meaning, you will be deleting that particular column. However, that column will give you a lot of meaning. See, if you observe here, let me go a little down. See, check it out. Set scheme codes. One second, I'm sorry. Where I can find here? One second, I'm just trying to identify the codes. Mm. Yeah, these all are different, different codes where you can find. You can just take all these codes into Microsoft Excel and you can simply do a, check it out. This code is having a lot of indication. Facility code is one column you can find in the UBI. The code means it's a CC account, OD account, demand draft. Every time, instead of asking the branch manager, you can just take this data into your Excel and you can do a small VLOOKUP function and you will get to know. And also for all the security codes, by looking into this codes, you will get to know majority of the information. But since your data is having all the codes, you may not know exactly the meaning of those codes, but you need to do little homework for that. And especially if you look into the scheme codes, this is the one which I always ask them. Check it out. All the scheme codes covered here, every scheme code. So you can simply use a VLOOKUP function, copy paste this data, put into your Excel, simply use a VLOOKUP function so that your data also will have a scheme name. Once you get the scheme name, you can start doing the filter and you can use your judgment and experience and you can get a lot of inferences out of it. One of the code which I found, as I said, in the uh, UBI, sorry, the SBI is the area condition. What I'll be doing here, let me write the meaning of the reason of this code. Since I already have this data, where is the data? This is what my Excel data. Let me put equal to VLOOKUP, look for this value where within this table, two columns, check it out, look for this value in this table. If it is available, give me the second column value as an answer, close bracket, enter, just copy and paste. Since zero is not there, now let me repeat this formula. VLOOKUP is looking vertically in that table for this value in this table. This table is having two columns. The values are in D column and D column. I want to get the second column value if this value is available. If not, it's going to give me if error, uh, an error. To avoid these errors, what I can do, I can use an if function, if error function. If this entire result is an error, I want Excel has to give no reason. Of course, we are going to ask the branch manager why the error condition is not there for this, but just for our understanding. Enter. Now what I can do? You can simply go to the stratification. Wow. I can just come down to the area condition. Every column you can do some analysis. Now you can just go to the area here. Sorry, I can take maybe how many accounts are there. 
Let's take the account number. I can get the count. And what is the outstanding balance for this? Wow. Let me just copy it. And you can, by looking into this, you can understand. This is greater than two EMIs overdue. This must be into the two EMI, third greater than or equal to 30 days. This must be into the SMA two and seven to 29 days. This must be into the SMA zero report. And this must be into the SMA zero report. This must be nature of irregularity. Uh, we are not sure exactly it is. So you need to ask the comments for the from the manager. No reason. Anyway, this is talking about the NPA. It's already a substandard and so on. Right. So this is where you can do different, different stratifications. This is another stratification on the SMA strand. Okay. Two. I'll just take another five minutes of uh, Vijay sir, maybe if you can allow, and Premnath sir, I'll do one stratification, very important one, then I can just hand over the session to you guys. Is it okay, sir? Please, please do. Not yeah, in between, I'm just asking the question so that I will understand that at least someone is listening. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I hope my uh, voice is clear for everyone now. Vijay yeah, sir, is yeah, my voice clear? clear? Yeah, it is clear. Yeah. Great, great, great. So my, my just point to everyone who are attending this session is you need to make a uh, serious planning before going into the audit and uh, just do your homework for each and every point here uh, so that the files, you can keep it ready. The formulas, you can keep it ready. Once you get the data, you can directly work upon. I, I, I just want to ask all of you how you are going to analyze this data and how you are going to come in for this. Whether in borrowal accounts, the applicable interest rate is correctly fed into the system. I'm sure the majority of you, what you do, you will take some random data, random sanction letters. You will go to the particular account into the uh, whatever the CBS environment. You will check it out whether this interest rate is correct or wrong. But I'm having my own scientific method to uh, do this particular, to answer for this particular point. Everyone, please concentrate. I'll take this file. I will just go to the insert. I will just use the pivot table. I'll just click OK. I'm having a product code here. I can just keep the product code here or else you can keep product description. Anything is fine. I want to have the interest rate. Where is the interest rate? Let me go down. This is what my interest rate is. Keep the interest rate here. The advanced, you know, there is no meaning of totaling the interest rate for this particular product. I'm sorry, instead of explaining here, let me explain in directly the loan balance file where I already did a lot of work. Yeah, I'll be taking here itself. For the Let's go to the insert. Let's go to the pivot table. Let me uh, click OK. So let's go to pivot table. Click OK. Finish. Now what I'll be doing, I will take the account type here. Then what I want to take, I want to take the interest rate here. Whenever I take the interest, since it's a value labels number, it automatically sum. But will it have any meaning of summing the interest rate? No. What I'll be doing, I will take another interest rate. I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. I will take the account numbers count here. Okay. I will also take the outstanding balance here. You will get to know what I'll be doing. This is what the count of account numbers. This is what the outstanding balance. I don't want to make this interest rate the sum because sum doesn't have any meaning. I want to summarize values by the minimum. This one, I want to summarize values by the maximum. I'll tell you the meaning of this. This is minimum rate. This is the maximum rate. The meaning of this is, let me interpret one account so that you can understand. For this particular advanced type, there are two accounts. The total of amount is this. Okay. And uh, one customer is having the rate of interest 8.7. And another customer is having the interest rate of 11.45. Right. So what is the meaning of the account type? That means it is, it is a particular product type. Generally, for, for a particular product, interest rate has to be same. It's not, in some of the cases, it may not be same, but the, the spread may be 1%. That is based on the civil score, based on the how much collateral you are giving, and so on. 1% or 2% interest rate may differ. 
cannot have for the same product of housing loan for one person, seven person, the other person, 15 percent. That should not be the case. So what I'll be doing, I will simply put a spread here. I will put a spread here. Spread is nothing but the difference between this minus this. Let me just drag this down. OK, I'm having my own analysis that I just want to make a filter wherever it is greater than let's go to the end, select all these higher spread greater than 2%, whatever it is, I'm just trying to take this spread. That means for this particular product, there are two accounts. One customer is having 8.7. The other customer is having 11.45. The spread is almost like 3%. That means in this case, let us look into this aspect. If the branch manager wanted to do some favor to the customer, then what he can simply say, though the sanction letter may be saying 10%, he can just key into the system 8.7, right? So I though I need to take the samples out of this, but I have to take the samples from the lower side so that for which I'm having a scientific approach. It's very simple. I'll just put the samples here. I can take uh, two samples out of this just to verify for both the cases. In this case, I want to take three samples. In this case, let me take five samples. Let me take two samples. Let me take uh, four samples. This is what my total of sample. I can even allocate maybe this one to uh, Vijay sir, this one to Ravi, this one to Sharon, and maybe this one to Srinivas. So what they are going to do once, let's say this is what the staff, right? Let's say in this case, this is not entirely they are doing with the data. They need to physically look into the document then they should cross check into the system. After they physically verified a document and cross check into the system, they'll keep the document back there and they'll come back. If they get the Xerox copy, you need to again file it. It's a very difficult task. Of course, keeping all the documents along with you in a physical form is always advisable, but the physical form, sometimes they may miss it. In this case, what I can ask my staff, you know, I want, I want to ask them to take I can simply take, I'm sorry. Yeah, I simply take, I can ask simply take the photocopy of uh, that as a proof. Okay, I can just go to the insert. I'm sure my voice is clear, everyone for now, right? Yeah. So I, I can I can just go to the insert. Everyone, please understand this last point, very important. I can just go here. There is an option called object. That means you can embed your documents directly into your Excel. Now let's say I'll just go to the create from file, go to the browse. Maybe let's let's go to the desktop. Let's say some of the pick they saved here. I'll just go to the desktop. Maybe one pick is there is a pick called go to webinar. Just double click it. Otherwise, let me take the some of the pick, any of the pick, that's fine. Let's take this pick. This is a proof. Display it as an icon. Click OK so that this icon will be there. If I save this file, send across to any one of you, even if you double click this, you will get an image. That means even after 20, uh, even after five, six years, if I get a notice from the regulator, instead of me going into the document, opening a file, checking which document for which this proof is, I can simply double click this. Maybe in this case, there are three proofs. I can take uh, another image. Let's go here because there are two proofs, right? I need to submit there. So that for the staff also, it will be more systematic. Now I can just go here. I can just take maybe another proof of uh, uh, VBA icon. Let's display it as an icon. Let's say there's an image. I can just keep it here. Okay, maybe I can just keep besides this so that there are two samples, two uh, proofs are also here. If you can maintain a document like this, I don't think so anyone uh, will come to you and ask a question. Even the samples, what you are taking, having a uh, you know scientific approach, even the samples, even the stratification, everything along with this of course the remaining internal controls what the prema sir mentioned and everything is just to make ourselves comfortable otherwise i can simply go to the branch and i can take 100 random accounts and i can start doing the audit but tomorrow if you get a question from the regulator why you have not taken this account into your sample then if you take a random sample you will not be having any answer but if you make a stratification properly if you have a proper scientific approach Tomorrow, I can even explain to the regulator that regulator, this is the way I have taken the samples and this is the methodology I adopted. I feel there is no meaning of looking into this. 
where the spread is less than 2%, then I have taken wherever more than 2% is there. Then all those deviations, probably you can keep it into the LFR as an annexure and you can just put along with your LFR statement and send across to everyone. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just stopping since the time is already 7.10. I want to just give the space to the other speakers. So, Premnath sir, over to you, Premnath sir or Vijay Srinivasan. Yeah. yeah thank Anyone you. Is there? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, is it audible now? Yes, 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 VG, sir. It's absolutely yeah. audible. Thank you, thank you, uh, friends. Uh, once again, uh, thanks. Uh, thank. Uh, I wish to thank uh, Hyderabad branch of uh, ICA of SIRC of ICA. Sorry for that. Uh, I was not prepared, so suddenly to join. Thought, uh, sir, I might be continuing for another five minutes also. So sorry for that. Uh, yeah. Uh, before. Uh, I, I proceed with, I would also like to thank uh, the earlier uh, committee uh, for the kind of initiatives, what they have taken one such initiative is uh, where they have requested the members of uh, Hyderabad, Hyderabad branch to add on to the guidance note of uh, bank audit issued by ICA. And I'm uh, proud to share that uh, there are 10 members uh, who have joined it and recently uh, they were felicitated in, uh, 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 in the hands of uh, vice president. So I'm being a part of uh, that 10, 10 member team. I'm very happy uh, uh, to be part of that. And I, I would like to see more such uh, initiatives from uh, Hyderabad branch now that I have one more committee member as a panelist as well. So probably I can place that request. Yeah, uh, I'm sure uh, by the way we uh, three people present, uh, there might be a couple of uh, topics which might be overlapping. Uh, so kindly bear with us because uh, over and all, it's going to be data analytics. When we speak about data analytics, it definitely has to be uh, identifying, uh, uh, well, I mean, that text to columns, or all those things. Okay. Let me try to uh, probably uh, considering the time we are at uh, 7 11. So, what I'll do is I'll try to do it in a reverse chronological order where I'll try to present a couple of tips initially. Then I'll take you to uh, a couple of functions, important functions where we can use in terms of uh, Excel or data analytics. Okay. Uh, let me share uh, the entire screen, then uh, try to take you through. Uh, so there is this uh, one particular website, uh, which I found it uh, uh, worth, uh, convertcsv.com, wherein it has given various ways to uh, convert your text uh, files to Excel files. Like if in case you are not so familiar with the Excel and you're finding it difficult to use text to column and all, there are many such open tools available in the website. So one such is convert CSV, where you can fix, uh, you can define what is the width of each of those particular columns. That is one. Second, uh, uh, I would also like to share, uh, probably uh, to mention, let me just uh, share one screen. Like many of you were wondering about uh, uh, what are the files we have been using. So you can just scan this particular uh, QR code or let me just display the image. Hope it is visible to all. You can scan this particular image, take a snapshot of this and image where it will take you to the Dropbox where we have placed uh, all the files. Or those For those who are using the system, once you have taken a, a screenshot of this particular QR code, save into your system files and you can just go to a particular website called uh, webqr.com webqr.com wherein either you can take the snapshot directly from the screen like say if i'm saying that i'm displaying uh, my screen so i can say hello my camera and access that particular or otherwise you can directly click on that particular file where you have that like say if i'm speaking about the one where i mentioned uh, this thing i'll select the image and I'll say open. So once I scan that, you can see that there is a link displayed immediately. So once you click on the link and uh, you have all the dump uh, used by us, not only that, you also have the list of uh, Fenacle codes, latest one updated. You also have the guidance node. You also have the uh, uh, directions issued by RBI in various uh, this thing. And also the guidance note uh, in terms of IFC. Uh, issued by uh, ICA with regard to the public sector bank. So you can just use this particular option where you take a snapshot of this QR code and uh, you can browse through mobile or through system where you can use this uh, webqr.com 
to access the files where you have placed. Hope uh, all of you are, uh, yeah, you want me to show again the QR code. So I'm just displaying for a couple of seconds. Kindly take a screenshot or a snap. Then later on, you can use. If you are using mobile, anyway, you know the, how to use the QR code scanner. Otherwise, if you are using system, you can use webqr.com. That is webqr.com, where you can access the files where we are using mostly. And Seren also will be shortly placing his files as well, along with the reference material uh, right from guidance notes to the RBI circulars, whatever the issue. And also, you have a couple of finacle course. Yeah. And uh, hope you have taken the screenshot. Now let's proceed further. Let's say to open up the file, I have also ensured that uh, if I go to the list of uh, finical codes, uh, wherever possible, with the help of the presentation made by Kuntal Shah, I have also tried to highlight what are the important uh, fields, what you can make. This is the Excel file, which is still there in the folder if i run the remove the blanks so for each of the important menus uh, what you can make use this is especially in terms of finacle more or less flexicube and all obviously flexicube is much more uh, uh, easy because oracle itself has published those in their website uh, all the comments and also you have various guidances available so there uh, you can make use of uh, this is a 10x option that is the latest one where you can identify what exactly each command is useful for and especially when it comes to the printing, as you can see, uh, file transfer to the local system. These are the two menus, what you'll be using. And uh, other one is where you save it. HPR is the one where you save in extract. I've also mentioned a couple of screenshots taken from the various websites in terms of how you can identify multiple CF and accounts by using a, a mobile number of the customer. There are a couple of screenshots also. I suggest uh, you visit this uh, particular folder, Dropbox folder, and download this latest finical course. That is one. Uh, so just to uh, repeat, QR code where you can scan and visit this particular Dropbox. Okay. Now to start with, obviously trial balance is one important uh, file where uh, I'm not sure whether uh, Prem Nasser or uh, Saran has uh, uh, completed the rust, but but let me just uh, repeat that. Uh, when it comes to trial balance, obviously that's where uh, your branch profile is based on. Uh, when it comes to, uh, uh, this is more of pixel bit, which uh, Saran was explaining about the way from where these uh, reports will be generated, whether it is a live server or a report server kind of thing. And this is so important for us because based on this, not just our sampling size will be decided. Uh, also, I can think about uh, how what is the changes has happened right from the opening uh, compared to the current year and so on and so on. So on. Okay. Now, all uh, whenever you are accessing these kind of reports, the first thing is ensure that at least the top part, of course, as you know, as I keep on generating various pages, the headers and the footers keeps repeating, but at least for the first part, ensure that your column labels are on the top of the table. Let the other table uh, footers and all repeat, but doesn't matter. But at least for the first part, if you can ensure the advantage of that, I'll, I'll try to display, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, some something in the chat box. Okay. So once I ensure that, the advantage I'll show you shortly. Now, most of the time we are worried about text to columns, the way we try to import or exp um, convert that into fixed width, like Seren has displayed the way uh, you convert uh, the fixed width into this particular, or if you have a delimiter like a uh, pipe and all, you know, like, like in case of SBA, how we are going to use that. I display one simple tool, which is also uh, of course, it's not uh, a free tool, but at least it has a trial version. You can just search for Zoho Analytics. Okay, Zoho Analytics, where you log in and you, you don't need to, uh, I mean, of course, uh, you, you can just use your Google account. Like if you have a Google account, you can use that, which allows you to go for some 14-day uh, trial kind of thing. That's, I believe, sufficient, at least uh, for this particular bank audit season. Okay. Now, what this Google Analytics does? Okay. Once you go into that, there are various analysis and all uh, where you can make use of. The first one is, uh, let's say I'm trying to import the files. Okay. There again, it has given options of importing CSV 
or the any excel file kind of thing let's say i want to analyze maybe uh, a ccod file okay i want to analyze this file so first thing what we understood i'll ensure that at least for the first part i'll keep my top label on the top of the table and i'll save it okay and i'll try to import this file into my zoho analytics control c that is the folder you have copied you've gone into your uh, zoho analytics page choose the file select the path of it choose the file which you want to import and say next okay so this is what the text to column we are doing in excel but if in case files like ccod and all where it is generated from the uh, live server i i know that that is going to be a, a delimiter so i'll choose the delimiter let's say uh, there is a delimiter called uh, pipe pipe this is what uh, sbi uses okay so i'll use that pipe and i'll try to create now it says that uh, so and so so and so is what uh, you have i'll say okay fine with it and it will take you to the analysis page okay so what it has it is asking a question whether you want to auto generate the report take the advantage of that because it might exclude all the blanks it might exclude all the junk data whatever it is there take the advantage of it let it generate an auto dashboard okay now this has imported now in case you are worried about the data privacy and all so called data privacy and all obviously when we speak about data privacy i'll be worried about the bomile number the email id ensure that at least you delete those obviously we will not have those kind of information in our reports unless i am generating some master file kind of thing so obviously i mean probably i'll also in a later way i'll put a question saying that okay if you are so worried about the data privacy now how come you are given all the permissions in your mobile to the apps what you download where you are having my contact as well is it not without my consent you are giving app permissions so that also is a data privacy breach so let's not talk of data privacy at this point of time uh, so at least if you can uh, uh, probably you know get rid of the mobile number and the email id so you should not be worried about the data privacy now it has created certain dashboard where uh, let's say i want to identify uh, now in this case it has and uh, get rid of uh, got rid of all the junk data blanks and all it has given analysis let's say for example i want to identify something like uh, uh, i want to find out the account balances uh, based on a particular account type so i can edit this design wherein i'll go to the dashboard select that and what is that i want to do is let's say i want to uh, add instead of unclear balance i want to add something else let's say instead of unclear balance i want to have a quant type one second i want to have a quant type okay so based on a quant type i want to filter a particular dashboard fine so far so good i'll see go for view mode and uh, as i select any particular account type let's say i want to find out uh, any particular loan type so uh, so here let's add uh, one more let's design uh, this particular app so i can say i want to have a duplicate and this time i want to have analysis of uh, account type where i want to group by let's say account balance i'll say apply okay and i'll say view mode so for each account type it is giving uh, let's say if i am selecting uh, some particular item it says this is the account balance or uh, for some particular item this is the account balance okay now once you have ensured okay it is very minimal okay now why am we are using this is because i might be worried in terms of using excel because when you use excel you have to be little bit using pivot table and all where you can create a dashboards and all i'll show that also Uh, if in case you are uh, trying to use excel but if in case you are worried probably make use of this 14 days trial try to import the data where you can now once you have that i want to find out who are the top customers now let's say i am selecting 
the entire uh, tables, I want to extract uh, a customer data, let's say write off amount, and you want to extract this, you can just click it and save you underlying data. Now it has extracted all those uh, customers based on what analysis you are using, you are using an analysis called uh, uh, top 10 write off of amount. Okay, so from the given table, it has filtered down the top 10 write off amounts and it has extracted that data. Now, likewise, you can keep various analysis. It probably just needs uh, a, a, a two to three hours for you to understand each of uh, particular usage, what you can make. And this will summarize uh, the way you can probably use the pivot of each of the particular group. And this is one way. If in case you are worried about uh, not using, I mean, uh, the Excel kind of thing. Okay. Now let's get back to the Excel, what, what uses I can make in terms of Excel. So I've, uh, I'm not going getting into data import of uh, text to column kind of thing, which you already done, uh, Seren has done, okay. Now, out of the same file, these all these, I've not uh, created anything. Let's say, for example, I want to say, I want to identify the account type for each account type. I want to find out what is the outstanding. So let's say the outstanding. Okay, then here I can just sort down uh, based on, I can group uh, filter based on top 10. Okay, whether it is top 10 or bottom 10, if you are negative balances, you are identifying uh, the bottom 10. If it is a positive balances, you will identify. Now you have this, you can just probably, if you want to have a proper presentation, you can have the presentation as well. So this is what the dashboard we are speaking about. Now, why we are doing this? Are we doing any kind of uh, fancy dashboard and all? No, we are also trying to create those evidences what, based on which sample, like the way stratification and all what uh, Seren has explained. And that I want to have uh, a backup in terms of what is that I've used. So I've just sample as a sample, uh, I've created a couple of dashboards. Uh, these are the top five accounts which are outstanding uh, in terms of percentage and the number of accounts under each type. Uh, so these are all possible by simple pivot. You don't need to worry about anything. Just create a pivot, use the grouping, try to create this, and that's where it will be a, a proper working for what analysis you have done. Okay, so this is uh, uh, one way. I'll, I'll have, I'm getting a couple of questions and all. I'm not sure whether if uh, Serena or Premnath can address, they can please respond to that. Otherwise, if it's something yes, yes, like my presentation, I'll, I'll try to address it then. Okay, now. CCOD, the kind of analysis, what you have to do, obviously, uh, Premnas has explained about uh, the importance of uh, common data, I mean, um, CF numbers, and pro probably Seren also would have shown you what is the importance of having a uh, customer uh, common uh, uh, CFs for multiple, um, the same customer holding multiple CFs and all using fuzzy lookup or whatever. You can also make use of the class where you filter out uh, uh, whether it is the uh, class is greater than three or if it is SMA code, you might go for SMA two or three and identify, try to uh, tag it as NPR standard asset. Then once you have, obviously you can have the pivot where you can identify uh, for each standard asset or NPA, uh, what are the accounts falling into that, okay. So I'm, I'm not getting into much of uh, CCOD, like term loan is one uh, which, uh, easy to identify and also helps out okay so i'll take a couple of examples out of uh, uh, term loan and try to explain what what analysis we can do okay so considering the timeline i'm trying to address the important way and the easiest way possible and the one more thing before i miss out we have seen uh, uh, convert csv that is one you can also i mean some people might complain saying that no branch is not allowing you to share the files okay if not, they would have shared definitely the printouts. Is it not? They would have shared the printouts. Fine, not a problem. They, let's assume that someone has provided a printout like, uh, I'll take up a sample. They have provided a printout like this, or probably I'll take something which is not in a proper format so that I, uh, you can uh, understand the importance of it. This is also delimited properly. Uh, let's say, yeah. I'm, so let's assume that this is a file, this is a printout what branch has provided. What you do, you take a camera or a mobile, take a snapshot, take a picture of it. So in my case, because I'm giving a demo, let me use a snipping tool uh, to capture the particular image. Okay, let's say I'm capturing this particular image. 
Okay, there's a menu. I'll hide this one second. So let me capture again. There was a zoom menu, so that's the reason I've canceled it. Okay, let me capture once again, wherein I want to capture. Let's assume that this is a printout provided by the bank, and I'm trying to capture many of zoom is coming in between. That's the reason I'm worried about. Okay, fine. So this is the photo what you have taken of the printout given by the bank. Not a problem. You save it. Save the picture what you have taken by the bank. Let's say I'm saving it over here. Okay, now you just go to the regular way what we do, Google what we type. I'll say image to text uh, table, something, whatever language I can use. Take up any particular uh, uh, link. Let's say I'm going to take up the top first one. What is the picture we have taken? I'll click on that. Go to the folder where I've saved the picture, what I've taken of the printout. Fine, it says two demos allowed, not a problem. When I'm using incognito, I can keep on refreshing two files. Now, what it has done, the picture what you have taken from the paper, the picture has been converted into the table. Now, what I do, I just say Excel and download. Now, open up the file. What it has done is, it has converted the particular picture what you have taken into the table what you are looking for. Now you don't have an excuse saying that no branch has not provided the data. They would have provided the printout, take a picture, go to website, open up any particular tool where you can extract from the picture table. You have multiple such open tools. You don't need to worry about that. Many tools are available. Convert it, you got your data into your Excel. Now you can do whatever analysis you want to do. So likewise, there are many such, it's only that the way you, you, you try to you know, get that particular analysis because we unfortunately, when we speak about the bank audit, we see it separately compared to the regular audits. What we do, obviously, what you do in case of company audit or public uh, sector company or a large company, that kind of try uh, are uh, uh, saying that no, I want to find out the reason. I mean, based on the scope, I want to identify the control lapses. I want to analyze the data, and then once you get into that particular mode, you find out your ways. You will definitely find out your ways. Okay. Fine, and probably Premna sir also might have certain hints saying that no, when they don't provide the data, not a problem. You ask for the data, what they share it to the RBA or the officials, that data should be sufficient for you to do the analysis by using regular VLOOKUP. Now, one important uh, tool I would like to share uh, when it comes to analysis of uh, term loan. I'll take one of the files shared with you uh, in your file. There is a particular file called uh, uh, term loan what if analysis. Okay. Now, to understand this, this is the file, what they have provided for the term loan, where you have the customer name, account number, the limit, the interest rate, theoretical balance, outstanding. So far, many, probably Sharon or Premna sir would have already been sharing the same file again and again. Okay. Now, what we do is, there are a couple of financial functions which you can make use, that will be very handy when you are using, uh, when you are uh, going for a bank audit. Okay. What are those financial functions? What exactly is that? Of course, we'll not get into deep, but just to mention, there is a function called PMT that is, uh, which is equivalent to EMI. That is a payment constant throughout period. Then you have NPER. This is nothing but your EMI number of EMIs. This is similar to your number of EMIs. And uh, you have present value. That is the loan amount. And uh, you have uh, uh, more or less, uh, of course, rate, regular rate, interest rate, whatever uh, the bank has charged and all. Okay. So these are the few important things what you can do. And of course, combined with a couple of date functions like date diff. I believe all of you know what date diff does is uh, if you are trying to type date diff, it doesn't dis uh, display because that's not a function which is used in Excel. That's a macro for function. So just remember the syntax. It says about the start date end date that is the loan starting date end date probably your date audit date that is 31st of march and of course the format text which usually if i want to find out in terms of months i'll be using m format text for month okay now what uses we can make use of these financial functions let me show one by one let's say banker has provided this sanction date 
and uh, you are provided with the number of EMIs. This column is not there earlier whenever they are provided. Okay, you have a sanctioned it. It says EMIs, and uh, sometimes uh, they might provide uh, saying that the EMIs due, EMI paid. Okay, they, they haven't mentioned in this case what is the total number of EMIs. That's the, that's the problem with the, the way they configure the finacle when they generate the report. They could there is a possibility of generating all these in one particular report, but for some reason they don't um, uh, configure in that way. One report contains the sanction date, the number of EMIs due, and what is the EMI amount. Okay, uh, one report speaks about the loan amount, the EMIs, number of EMIs, total number of EMIs, the EMI amount. You may not have a sanction date properly captured. Okay, so in that scenarios, how we can make use of this financial function? Let me take uh, this particular example. I want to find out from this particular sanction date as on 31st of March, that is the date of audit, how many number of periods this loan should have served. I can use make, uh, make use of this dative function. If you remember the syntax, it says the starting date, the ending date, that is the audit period. I want to find out the number of months. Okay, let's convert this into a regular general so that I can see the numbers. Now it says, let's freeze the top row that is the current date of audit now it says for this particular loan from the date of sanction till this date it should have been uh, 171 months past but here it shows uh, emis i mean of course this is a demo file what we are using okay or let's try in the other file which uh, this is the latest file of the last year so i'm going to use the same thing as on the date of audit date diff start date end date let's freeze it I'm trying to find out the number of months and convert into general. So it says 51 months. Now it says cleverly, it says EMI is due, EMI is paid. Nowhere it has mentioned about the total number of EMIs. Is it not? Without total number of EMIs, sometimes I might find difficult. Okay, well, let's find out the total number of EMIs. For this loan, what is the total number of EMIs? How do you find out? Obviously, you just go to one particular, you have EMI, that is your uh, PMT. You have uh, the number of EMIs, what this uh, particular loan from this particular date. So what we can do is, I can find out what is the uh, uh, total number of EMIs, uh, this particular. So the NPER is the function which gets you, uh, returns the number of periods in uh, particular investment. So I am going to use that rate already we have 5.94% and obviously that is in uh, uh, not in a particular percentage so I can use the percentage factor over here I'll say percentage divided by 12 because we are having EMI that is monthly basis PMT is nothing but your EMI so that being a negative value that is an outflow I'll use minus of this and to this the present value is nothing but the loan amount which I already have mentioned so let's check on the loan amount and say enter it says 75.58 roughly if i have to round it off also let's say round of this so 76 months and uh, wherever you have error that could be reason uh, where you know the ema is not properly captured or something could have. that also could be one of the point of skepticism okay now in this case it says 76 months if only this particular loan is for 76 months that's where it will match with the EMI. Or if only this particular loan is for 112 months, then only it can match with the EMI. That means you got the total number of EMIs. Now, what is the advantage of total number? Let's call it as total EMIs. Now, what is the advantage of having total EMIs? I can find many things out of this. First thing, let's find out what is the interest he should have paid as on date of audit. Okay, so I can use a function called CUMIPNT, that is the interest payment, or CUMPRINSE, that is the principal payment, cumulative interest payment, cumulative principal payment. So I'm going to use CUMIPNT rate, I'll refer to this percentage by 12. Then NPR, that is the total number of, we understood that this loan should have been 76 months, considering the EMI amount, what they have mentioned. So that is going to be my total period of loan. Present value is your loan amount. So select the loan amount. Starting period, obviously from the first 
month onwards end is our uh loan uh, i mean that uh, as on the date of audit how many number of emis we would have served now considering the data if what we have found from the date of sanction as on the date of audit how many number of months has lapsed that is my end period we will calculate interest at the end of the period now it says this account should have served a total interest of 534808 as on the date of audit now you can check with the total interest payment report for this particular account how much he has paid obviously if the difference is more than uh, uh, the cumulative total of 3 months then that definitely that can be called as an irregular is it not i want to find out the cumulative principal in the same grounds the advantage of uh, cumulative principal uh, formula is it follows the same formula except for the function name so i can copy that and uh, instead of cum ipmt i will use pr and ic so it says 18,86,000. So if I put together both, total amount should have been served is 24,21,165 as on the date of audit for the given loan amount. Okay. So likewise, these financial functions are so handy where you can find out, like in this case, without any additional information from the banker, we have found out the total EMIs, though it is not there in the report. We have found out what is the total EMIs you should have served. We have found out what is the interest you should have paid as on the date of audit. So as in case of principal, that is one. Second, there is one function, uh, one tool called uh, uh, what if analysis. Okay, so that can be found in your data tab. What if analysis? Okay, there is a, a goal seek. What goal seek does is it will do a reverse calculation, saying that if you have to reach a particular goal by changing a particular variable. Okay, what will be what will be the end result out of it? So I've just given a demo out of it. This I believe I've covered in the last year presentation also. Just to repeat, let's assume that this is the uh, details provided by the bank report where it says there is an interest rate of eight point five for a twenty four month period for a loan amount of seven lakh fifty. The banker has provided the EMI of twenty three five sixty one. Okay, I want to cross check because as I was mentioning about uh, in various sessions when we speak about the daily NPA reporting. The still the risk is persistent because branch has still control on the number of EMIs and the yeah uh, uh, what you call the schedulement date, rescheduling date and all. When I have control on those two, any time I can modify that particular. Okay, so uh, this is a classic example. Now uh, I can cross check what should be the actual number of months considering the given EMI by the banker. So what we do, we use a PMT function to find out for the given rate. For the given period of twenty-four months, for the given loan amount, what should have been the actual uh, EMI? Okay, now let's prefix with the minus. So it says if in case given constraints or given uh, variables, the EMI should have been thirty-four thousand ninety-one, whereas the banker has provided as twenty-three five sixty-one. I want to investigate where could be the problem, whether it is a problem with the loan amount or with the interest rate or the EMI. Let's understand the database. The way the controls are given, the interest obviously, as you all know, it will be run through the patch shared by the zonal or the regional or the head office. So that can't be possibility of bank involving and in modifying. Same as with the loan amount, obviously it goes with the sanction terms. Okay, so the only possibility is the loan months. Okay, there if in case any modification has to be done at the branch level, that is possible in terms of loan uh, number of EMIs. Okay, so what I've done is I found out the EMI uh, as per the uh, variables. The EMI provided with the banker. Find out the difference between those two. It works out to ten thousand five hundred. Now, what we do? We use this what if analysis goal C, saying that this cell should turn out to be zero. Now, how it will? Let me just uh, try to magnify so that uh, you can see the screen. Okay. Now, I'll what I'll do is I'll set this particular differential amount. That is this ten thousand five thirty into zero by changing the number of months. What I'm trying to check with the goal seek is if this has to turn out to be zero, that means this also should be become uh, converted to twenty three five sixty one. Now, how it will become twenty three five sixty one? I'm allowing Excel to change this twenty four by using permutation combination in such a way that this EMI turns out to be twenty three five sixty one. By doing that. It will work out, and it says if it is thirty six point one nine. Let's assume it is thirty six. Then that's where it will become twenty three five sixty one. That means this loan term 
has been modified to 24 months okay so it could be reverse way also it could be like a extending of loan uh, period in terms of moratorium or otherwise okay so that is where we can make use of this goal seek now what we do is we'll try to use the same goal seek on the entire term loan table provided by the bank now if i have to do this goal seek again and again that will be time consuming so what we do is we repeat the steps by recording a macro let's say i'm using let me just zoom it i'll use a pmt function to find out what should be the actual emi now in this case in the given file this particular uh, uh, account it says 3126 is the emi i'm trying to find out given the particular variables what should have been the actual emi so i'm using pmt rate already mentioned over here seven so i'll use percentage divided by 12 then the period that is the total loan period obviously i can use let's say uh, i in this case because we are trying to use goal seek to find out what is the actual number of emis to match with the emi provided with the banker so what we do we'll take some dummy number okay we'll say one okay now i'll use pmt the rate percentage divided by 12 we'll refer to this dummy period and we'll say the loan amount whatever they have taken this is the loan amount and let's find out what is the em okay now our goal seek is to match make it 3126 to make it i am asking excel to change this one into such a number that is such a number of emi so that it becomes 3126 so that i can find out whether this 60 is right or is there any other thing i have to check in okay now let's put minus before that so can, so that i can find out the difference so i'm going to differentiate this minus the emi this is that is the emi calculated by me considering one month and the emi now what we do we use a goal seek what is that how is the way we do i'll say what if goal seek i want this turned out to be zero by changing this one and find out permutation combination now it says if it is 182 months of emis then that's where it will become 3126 now if i go to let's say okay if i go to the table he has provided 60 and emi is 55 paid five pending but actual emi is 182 even if i cross check with the data if it says for the sanction date as on the date of audit it is actually 171 maybe after considering uh so i can make out that okay there is some modification happened could be rescheduling could be uh anything i mean probably a restructuring of course not a restructuring could be rescheduling or and a moratorium uh, applied whatever it could be so i can at least try to find out what could be the reason behind this okay now do i have to do this for each of the account it's not required because the same step what we have done i would have recorded it as a macro you know that if i record a macro i can anytime go to macro and call the macro and i keep running that particular goal seek. okay now i have also provided in the given folder a particular uh, text file called uh, uh, macro goal seek macro let me just uh, identify yeah goal seek macro so you can just use it you can have many videos uh, lying in the youtube or google uh, to how to copy paste this macro into your excel you can just use this so this is the macro what i'm trying to use what it does is it will keep calling the goal seek macro again and again for each of the table for that what we do i'll just uh, make it dummy number one copy the formulas throughout the table okay then just find out the goal seek so what i'll do i'll place my cursor over here i'll use the macro looping run so at one just a couple of seconds it has run the goal seek macro throughout that and this is where it says if it is 182 months 259 months 175 months 367 months whatever whatever now i can match with the emi provided to the banker and try to find out what could be the reason whether the emi has been modified by taking the help of uh, rescheduling or is there any moratorium applied or any other reason uh, uh, by which this emi is not matching with the emi okay so that is one way of uh, investigating uh, this particular now let me just uh, check i'm also keeping a watch on the timing as well now just to repeat the one uh, what premna sir has mentioned 
the lifesavers for the bank audit analysis, if I have to mention. These are the five which you can make use, filter, sort, we look up, pivot, and if function. What name manager and all will help is, let's say, for example, I have uh, I have uh, tried to create a documentation for each of the trial balance. I'll not take, uh, I'll not get into the deep of that, but let's say, uh, for the trial balance, what I've exported, let's say for the trial balance, what I've exported, I want to tag this each of the line item to identify what part of the report it impacts, whether it will be impacting my LFAR, it will be impacting my aquifer, or probably it will be impacting my certification, what we do. And let's say these are the various certifications what we issue, maybe audit report or tax audit report, LFAR, or aquifer and actuals, what you prepare and all that. So the references, what I was mentioning about in this particular file is name manager is you can just use these formulas and you can define the name so that anytime when you say report name, it will identify that. So what you do is you go to the trial balance, try to tag this for tagging each of the thing. You go data, you say data, data tools, you say list. You, you type the list name what you have captured. If you remember what was the list name, we call it as report name. For the easy sake, what we do is I'll type report underscore name. This is what I want to get a drop down over here. So I'll say data tools list. I'll say equal to report underscore name. By doing that, I'm getting the list of those particular reports. What I'm now each I might say this might impact my uh, LFR. Okay, so I'll be tagging this. Likewise, you want to tag some certificate, you want to tag some uh, ICOFA related control report, any particular report. So each line item, if you re, if you tag, and this you are giving, once you have tagged it, you are giving it to your uh, subordinate or associate, you can identify whether this part is covered in the respective report, it has been reviewed, uh, all those things. So it becomes a checklist kind of thing uh, by using this simple tool of uh, creating references. Okay. Now, name manager of course the data rules that's what we have seen the goal seek already we have seen now let's take up one more interesting uh, uh, you say i'm not interested in uh, zoho i'm not interested you might say i'm more concerned about uh, data privacy okay and i'm uh, more concerned about sharing this data to anyone i want to use my own excel but i don't want to use pivot i don't want to use vlookup i don't want to use if function anything i don't want i just want to do all the analysis for that let me just show you a simple way of doing that very effective provided you of course it requires little time you need to spend on that okay let me just get rid of all this junk data or let's do the analysis on ccod okay now we have we have you have tried to do analysis on ccod terminal independently sometimes premna sir was mentioning or even seren was mentioning that you combine all those files into one so that you can make analysis how do you do that uh, consolidation i'll just show in simple steps let's say i want to capture this account number i want to capture account name uh, contact customer number i want to type capture the type uh, and fourth column i want the customer name fifth column maybe i want to have the loan amount or the balance amount let's say these are the five uh, columns which i want to combine in both the files okay so one customer account number, customer number, account type, customer name, and loan amount. In term loan also, I want to capture the same. So what we do, I just insert a row. This is the first one I want to capture, second, third, fourth, fifth. Now, the simplest way is just click over here. You go to data, you go to sort, you go to options. Now, instead of top to bottom, because I'm trying to capture based on the serial number, I'll say sort left to right, fine, immediately turn out to row. First row, we have our serial number. So what I'll do, I'll say row one number one. That's it. It has arranged the particular columns in the order what we are looking for. Account number, customer name, account type, customer name, and the balance. Same we do in the term loan as well. Select over here on the top of the corner, sort, options, left to right row number one immediately now what you do you just need to copy this entire columns you don't even need to learn append or merge and all just paste it one below another. now you got both the term loans of course before you do that always ensure that you tag those particular accounts because uh, let me just repeat that how what is meant by tagging is just insert a column before that 
and you call it as a CCOD and copy throughout this and this you call it as term loan and so let's say TL and copy now that's the only thing you do just copy this entire columns come back over here paste it below one below other now you have the headings are no more required now you have all the data let's call it as type now you have all the data one below other for main important fields leaving about the other fields okay so this is one way of consolidation instead of i i was mentioning about I, I even apart from this i want to make a simple use of analysis what is the way i'll just show let me get back i'll undo all this to get back my proper form fine let me undo this as well yes oh no this is the file now, whenever you have done the import of uh, entire text file into Excel, you ensure that first thing, the step what I'm trying to do is in Office 365, that is the latest version. If you don't have Office 365, that also I'll try to, if it is uh, fine with you, probably I'll take another five minutes uh, to explain this particular step. Very important, very life, uh, very good lifesaver for us, uh, even for the seniors to be very precise. First thing, once you have done this importing into your Excel, you ensure that the column headers are proper so that you can understand let's say i don't want this descriptive account number is fine customer name is fine rate is fine drawing power is fine okay expiry date so ensure that the column headings is in a plain english where you can understand fine that's the first step second step nothing you are ready with your data analysis what is that you do if you are using office 365 in the home button at the corner you have this analyze data if you are using any version other than office 365 or 2019 from 2016 or 13 and 16 you have something called ideas the name might be same uh, different but the workout will be the same i just click on this i don't do anything i don't use pivot i don't use uh, vlookup i don't use if function i don't use any of those sort what i have done is i've clicked on that excel has done its analysis now let's say i want to find out who are the top 10 customers of a given account type. Okay, so I'm going to find who are the top customer. Once you start typing, that's where I said ensure that you have you use proper column labels. I'll say who are the proper top five customers, top five customers. I'll mention number, top five customers where account what was the balance outstanding balance what was the name we have let me just cross check before i proceed i want to find out uh, maybe the drawing power top five customers drawing power so as i click on that analyze data i'll pose the question who are the top five customer select the customer name where drawing based on i'll say based on you can type anything as long as you're ensuring that the tagging of the column labels is fine select enter now what it says top five customer by drawing power you got this a particular you, you haven't done any pivot you haven't done any information you just put a question in analyze data top five customer how do you extract just insert pivot okay so insert pivot table now, whatever you have done, you got your workings placed in your sheet. Of course, it is taking time because the data is large and all. Okay, I think the Excel has one second, one second. Let me just get back to the file. Because I was trying to do many things at a time. Fine. Let's go with the step i'll place my i don't need to do anything i'll just analyze data i'll quickly run the question without taking much time top five customer name wise uh, based on drawing power enter you insert a pivot table okay because no 
we have already done some manipulations within the given file. I put some formulas and all, but you can see it, it is taking, it is generating whatever you are looking for. You don't need to worry about pivot and all. Everything, whatever question you put, what are what is the maximum interest rate? Uh, what was the column rate? What was the what is the maximum rate for account type? Uh, let's put this question U B C H K U B C H Q. What is the maximum interest rate for the given account? It says seventeen point one percent for the given account type. So you just need to type plain English. No need to worry about any other things. Got it? That's fine. Let's say I, you might say I don't have uh, Office uh, 365 uh, license in the laptop carried by my executive to the bank or, or carried by any partner. You might have only one license which is there in your office and you are uh, that is where in somewhere in the desktop and you are using uh, your laptop for the audit sake where it doesn't have Office 365 license. In, in fact, it has only Office 2000, Excel 2007. In that case, how we are going through. Pretty simple. You ensure that because you have one license, that means you have one drive access as well because by virtue of your one license. Save the file in your particular one drive. You just click on this share button. You click on the share and you share it through Gmail. Let's say for the sake of example, I'm using my Gmail ID. I'm saying KVJ was gmail.com okay let's assume that this is the gmail id of your staff and wherein your laptop what staff is carrying doesn't have the latest version but you want to use all these i'll just send it once i send it if i go to my email id i'll see that let me just refresh it so the file which we have used in the office that will be shared through online version of office 365 so let me just sometimes it might go into the spam as well. Just keep a eye. Just give me a couple of uh, uh, seconds so that uh, I can show this particular. This is very much important. Definitely uh, where you are using uh, only one license. Okay, now you got see this is the file what I received. What your staff does is go to his Gmail. Just click on the open. And he can access the same file online while also editing he can also edit this so you just need to change instead of viewing you say editing not only that the advantage of that is you are also accessing the same file simultaneously you are also accessing the same file simultaneously wherein if you are typing something forget about it because no all this uh, uh, this thing because many things happening in my browser so that's the reason it is warning it so if you are accessing, if you are typing something, let's say uh, you might say, check this particular customer. So you are inserting a comment saying that uh, to the staff, verify this account. Okay, now in this particular, uh, uh, this thing, of course, this is for some reason it is uh, disabled, but any, any comment what you place, let me just try to refresh it as i said because of the bandwidth or whatever reason but otherwise uh, we will have a smooth flow that i can ensure uh, edit workbook fix it okay fine some issue not a problem maybe password protected the file or whatever but whatever you type the comment he can see in the comment section and simultaneously you can use the same file it could be you and the staff or any multiple people also Okay, and you might say, sir, I don't even have the Office 365 license also. I'm having Office 2007, but I still want to use the analyze data what you have used in Office 365. Even simplest ways, I believe all of you have your Gmail accounts. Just go to Google Sheets. Click on the Google Sheets. Okay, and upload the file which you want to. Let me close this. I'll upload the file into my Google Sheets wherein I'll say upload. Let's say I want to upload the same demo file. So let me just drag and drop that into my Google Sheets of uh, Gmail. I believe all of you are having this Gmail account. So once you have uploaded, it will be opening in your Google Sheets. Now, 
just like the analyzed data what office 365 has or just like the ideas what 2016 had in the bottom corner you have something called explore you click on the explore it will do the same analysis the way excel has done of the entire data okay so let me just click explore it is doing the analysis of the file we'll try to put the same question what we put to microsoft what is that we asked about the top five customers where uh drawing power based on drawing power i'd say based on drawing power enter that's it it got the top five customer based on the top point you might ask anything you might say top rate interest wise or uh, irregularity or outstanding any kind of questions so, so i'm just putting a simple question you might even try to try with the various complicated but ensure that your column headings or the references of data is properly made okay you want to find out uh, 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 the interest rate of uh, this uh, uh, let's check uh, rasa c venu this is the name okay so i might say what is the interest that is the rate what is the rate of uh, mr uh, we'll check this enter it says 17.1 so you can just play around i mean you just try you can have many such analysis done okay considering the time constraint let's not take much time as i said uh, these are the sessions which uh, you run for uh, hours together still it will not be sufficient so let me stop sharing at this point of time and let's try to add questions Yes, sir. Ravi Shankar, sir, do we have some time, or shall we close it? Rajiv Vishal, if you have, if you can. Five go. minutes. Uh, if you uh -huh. can permit five minutes, I'll close with the documentation. Please, sir. Please, please. please, please. Uh, quickly, I'll do it. Please, please. I thank I thank the members for uh, patiently uh, staying with us. Um, kindly be for furthermore five minutes. Uh, I think we can stay, and then I'll close it quickly. We are sharing all these files so that it will be self-explanatory. Uh, let me uh, let me quickly close with the uh, documentation which is very important as per the auditing standards and this file which we are going to share with you has all the list of auditing standards because we say in our audit report we say in our audit report that we have carried out our audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards so right. since we say that you are trying to share the screen Ah, uh, just a moment. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yes. So we are saying here uh, we are complying with uh, various standards. Then the, it has SA two ten. Whether we are complying or not, we can write here yes, no, working paper and remarks. So all the standards have been put in this sheet here. Then this is an index, and why this control sheet? As per SA two thirty documentation, we are using this control sheet. Similarly, team as per SA three hundred planning and scope, we are using this scheme. Similarly, you have various other sheets given here, and uh, this control sheet gives links to whatever you wanted. I say sample list for various files, and so on. then uh, this is what sir has already explained so this is about um, analysis then we have uh, in our audit engagement letter this is audit engagement letter sa 200 documentation we need to give it in that we ask for various data like many of them are saying that uh, they are not providing now as a part of audit engagement letter prior to starting make them to commit that they are going to give you electronic records make them to commit and then ask for all these information and this information runs into 96 pieces of information which is captured here 96 pieces of information why 96 pieces of information i have given here already we are asking concurrent audit reports because to report in lfar 7 and who is going to do this job this is what sharon was talking about 
then 10 months of files provided what did you read in the 10 months of files is there something which is substantial significant notes what is significant notes is already given here significant notes are all bank audit observations will boil down to 12 of the observations which is given here and we are linking each of the observations in this audit control sheet each of your observations you can link it to if at all it is material and whether such reporting <clears throat> also has to be linked in lfr you can link it to which clause of lfr it is it's given a drop down here and as an annexure for this why annexure is i'll again take it back take back to the audit uh, report audit report what we are saying we are saying here we are gathering substantial evidence we are saying here sufficient and appropriate evidence obtain sufficient appropriate evidence for that this is the uh, backup and whatever observation given here is it relating to mboc is it relating to lfr is it relating to ifc goshan jilani committee or 38 other such reports what we sign so considering all those requirements of audit this 96 pieces of information needs to be taken from them and accordingly you need to do this and as vijay sir has already said that you take it into a you can take that into google sheet I'm saying uh, we are already taking it into Google Sheet. What I'm demonstrating, uh, what I'm demonstrating now is not a theoretical thing. What I'm saying is a practical thing what we have followed last year. So checklist and who has done what, the team size, the team size, who has worked where, and so on and so on. This is the control sheet. And this is an index. So what I'm saying is not a theoretical thing. It's a practical, which is edited. You can just see here, 14th April, 2021, and so on. So that is what we are sharing here. The same thing is being shared with you. And this is an audit control sheet, which you can carry along with you and link it to, and you can, as Vijay sir has already shared it, you can link it. This is linked to five different people of our office. The same way you can put it into either Office 365 or into anything. And this file contains what are all the files you should ask. If it is uh, uh, if it is FINACL, if it is banks, what kind of files you need to take is already given here. Then this is already explained. And this is most important thing. I'll not take much time. The stock statements, what you see, you kindly fill it in this. And then you uh, all the other ratios based on the ratios you can change these ratios these figures is automatic then you can calculate dp compare that with the sanction limit then make analysis of the stock which is not being done the stock analysis is not being done and hence there is a major fraud and all the cbi cases and all the cbi bank fraud case it is well very well said it is very well said that the bankers are not doing the stock analysis you can refer here Consumables are 50%. Bank is giving loan on a consumable instead of giving it on raw material and fixed books. And this is a way in which it has been done. And I'm also saying the way in which the fraudulent accounting practices are being done. So what I'm saying here is the stock statement analysis is very important. We need to read if fixed assets have been taken into stores and spares for gaining more drawing power. You don't find it. But unless you read the stock statements carefully, one thing. Next again, the debtors, opening debtors plus sales minus closing debtors gives you the collections and you can see the credit summation, compare that with the theoretical collection here and ask why there is a difference. Then, then in the same way, again, you have opening stock at all. You can calculate cost of goods sold, compare with the sales, then you'll get a margin. And you know very well, all the chartered accountants know that the, the the gross margin in manufacturing is almost more than 30%. Most minimum is only, if you take the minimum of minimum, it will be 25% as gross margin. Gross margin in manufacturing, it will not be below that. And if you look at the CMA projections, you will find that gross margin is higher. But actually, if you see here, if you make all these analysis, if you just capture only this graded, color graded one, the rest of the analysis is already picked up here with formulas. 
then you will find that the firm is a going concern, affecting a going concern. And if you look at the debtors in days in stock, you will find three three hundred and fifty days as debtors. You know, sixty forty days. You know, ninety days is the limit for debtors, and sixty days six hundred days of stock, which is higher than one hundred and eighty days. These are all the calculations we need to do as a part of EWS early warning signals. And you find here, you find here substantial increase, substantial. Increase in substantial increase in inventory, no increase in turnover. Substantial increase in re receivables, no increase in receivables. Substantial increase in receivables, no increase in turnover, and so on. These are all early warning signals. And if there is anything which has to be, which is an early warning signal, as a part of as a part of LFAR, as a part of LFAR, we need to comment on. We need to comment in the LFR on these issues. Let me just figure out this. Yeah. So I am saying here early warning signals. So whether the system of early warning framework is working effectively, if you say yes, what is the evidence you have? What is the homework we have done? We need to carry all those. audit procedures evidence gathered and what opinion you have expressed for saying yes or no in this lfr so this is one thing and uh, you also have diversions and all i said that the biggest challenge is to find out the related party in the number of occasions i have already talked about toffler if you go into the toffler and type uh, say So some company I have randomly taken it. I have nothing against this company. Then you can explore, explore, and explore. Then you will find the uh, companies which are related and floated by them, and uh, there can be directors who are jointly holding the companies in this, and um, you can export this into Excel. All these names. and once you export all these names and then compare those names with uh, fuzzy lookup or whatever it is and find out whether those names are already being covered here and once you go into the <clears throat> account descriptions and if you make a pivot on the account descriptions you will find all those related names with we lookup Uh, I I do understand. I am moving little bit speed, but whatever is already being given is already in the uh, YouTube channel, which I have already just now shared in the uh, chat. All these things are well explained. All these files are being shared with you, which is self-explanatory. So this is how we can um, carry out, and I am sharing this uh, presentation. And this is about the fraudulent accounting practices. and this is how you can check the uh, validate the out of order on the statement this is what uh, i said i let me quickly run through fast then this is how you can find out the diversions this is how you can check the cc loans uh, sampling and term loan samplings which sir has already explained and this is red flag understanding you can do it and i have given you why it cannot be system driven nps though rbi has said it is going to be system driven nps from 1st july 19 the 1st july 2021 onwards but still there are gray areas that is where we need to express our opinion in ifc with proper understanding and examples and these are all the reasons why system cannot have a system driven npa is not possible in these cases and this is where we need to have a manual intervention and these are all early warning signals how to verify those and fund diversion how you can verify and various excels and what file you need to take from the cbs and what analysis you need to do for what is explained here again and uh, audit planning and all this is what the file 96 pieces of information how you can correlate in this file and sa36315 we have already discussed about and sampling is discussed about loan rescheduling is what vijay sir has already talked about and i'll come back to an end now if 
the uh, the diagram explains what it is the photo explains what it is the picture explains what it is my audit tools are like bows and arrows my i as an audit tool i as an auditor going for a bank audit with these kind of tools and the regulators are much more much more tools they are com coming on us and it is for us to and it is for us to understand what kind of tools we need to understand and and i say i wish you a happy bank audit season thank you very much we have exceeded we have extended uh, much of the time thank you very much for your patient listening thank you thank very much sir well i just said i probably i don't know how rajmali could accommodate ntr ramcharan uh, in rrr movie but uh, hyderabad branch has done an adventure try to incorporate have uh, prema sir and sir and of course me playing ajay devgan role little bit but still it's still an adventure by hyderabad branch <laughs> yes so we are lucky to have you in hyderabad sir uh, generally we are crazy about our outside faculties but uh, i can say uh, all three of you are much much better than anybody else in the a country in this same business so oh, now i propose my formal vote of thanks for all the participants and uh, speakers and other dignitaries who are present uh, throughout the session uh, sir before that i would like to invite our chairman sir to share the participation certificates sir, for the panel speakers thank you secretary sir uh, first of all uh, an excellent sessions coming to an end sir in the three hours just went like that uh, because of the excellent uh, you have kept uh, all the audience intact uh, the compliments are already coming in the chat box i need not say much but i sincerely thank all the three stalwarts here premnath sir vijay sir uh, for their excellent contribution uh, they the speakers have very well covered not only the data analytics part of excel but also covered the risk documentation ifc related work hats off to you sir within the limited quantity of time you have covered very well uh, with your permission i'll share the screen uh premnath sir kindly accept yeah, thank you uh, this certificate from hyderabad branch i know you may be having in numbers but uh, yeah, from the first uh, from the new committee it is the first one sir please accept it thank you thank you very much it's my privilege I am taking the screenshot of all the signatories, sir. Thank you, <laughs> Vijay sir. First certificate, congratulations, Sandeep. <coughs> Vijay sir, uh, kindly accept and oblige, yes, sir. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, Upalpati sir, Saran Kumar sir. Thank you, uh, sir. Thank part you. Part of the committee on both the sides of the table. Uh, please do accept this. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you, secretary sir. Over to you. Now, already everything was told by chairman sir, like. Uh, the speakers have not only shared their vast knowledge in the subject and uh, insights into the bank audit but uh, they have shared that um, very useful templates and wor workable uh, documentation part also they have covered so it is it is it will be very useful for all the auditors in their audit assignments uh, once again i my sincere thanks to all the panel speakers vijay srinivas sir premna sir and sharan kumar uh, and other uh, committee members who are were there and other my special thanks to all the participants who are patiently listening to the, the sessions for the past three and a half years three and a half hours uh, with this i conclude the session thank you very much once again